to the uh, Town of Wakefield Board of Appeals meeting uh, for Wednesday, January 10th. I'm going to remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded and it will be available on replay in the town's website for uh, within a few days. I'll start by taking a roll call. Uh, Dave Hatfield. Here. Chip Tarbell. Here. Jim McBain. Here. Joe Pride. Here. Greg McIntosh. Here. Mickey Feely. Here. Kasumi Humphreys. Yeah. And uh, my name's Tom Lucy. I'm the chair. Obviously, I am here. I'm going to ask uh, Joe Pride, who is our clerk, uh, to read uh, the legal notice for the meeting. Sure thing. Uh, consistent with the governor's orders extended for certain provisions of the open meeting law, every effort will be made to allow the public to view and or listen to the meeting in real time. If you do not have a camera or a microphone, you can, you, I'm sorry, you can, uh, on your computer, you may use the following dial in number 1-301-715-8592, meeting ID 858-9239-1374, passcode 308 613, please only use dial in or computer, not both, as audio feedback will distort the meeting. This meeting will be audio and video recorded in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. This location is accessible to people with disabilities. Wakefield provides reasonable accommodations and or language assistance free of charge upon request. If you are a person with a disability and require information on materials in an alternate format, or you are or if you require any other accommodation, please contact the Town Disabilities Coordinator, William Renault, Town Engineer at 781-246-6308 as far in advance of the event as possible. Every effort will be made to grant your request. Advanced notification will enable the Town to make reasonable arrangements to remove an accessory ability barrier for, barrier for you. One, continued hearings. 2, 24-25, 24-26, 24-27. Richard Hubbard and Carol Hubbard, application for a special permit under Article 4, Section 190-22A1F of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to add an accessory apartment to a single family dwelling. Application for a variance under Article 10, Section 190-66, seeking a variance from the requirements of Section 190-22A1 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw related to a proposed accessory apartment. Application for a determination and or finding with respects to a continuation and extension of non-conforming uses under Article 9, Section 190-50 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw proposing to construct an addition onto the existing dwellings property shown as map 29 lot parcel 038 of the assessor's maps and is located at 117 New Salem Street. 3, 24-28, 24-29, Christopher and Sierra Newman, application for a variance under Article 6, Section 190-34 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw, proposing an addition onto a single family dwelling, application for a determination and or finding with respects to a continuation and extension of non-conforming uses. Article, under Article 9, Section 190-50A of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw, related to proposed addition onto an existing single family dwelling. The property is shown as Map 14A, Lot Parcel 130-15B of the Assessor's Map and is located at 28 Brewster Road. Board of Thank you, Joe. As is our custom, we've got um, some requests for continuance. Uh, I'm going to read those letters uh, first. So if anyone's here for the matters I'm about to uh, read, you can uh, know that they're going to be continued. First one is letter dated January 10th from Brian McGrail, Ari Granite Family Realty Trust. LLC 314, 330, and 336 Salem Street, Wakefield, Mass. Dear Mr. Chair, please continue this matter until your meeting on January 24, 24, and that we are working with the Department of Public Works on their recent request to provide an easement to the town of Wakefield as part of our plan to help the town address existing draining issues that the town currently has on Salem Street that has nothing to do with the project. My clients are working with the Department of Public Works to accommodate the request but since it will have an impact on our site plan, conditions, and operation and maintenance plan, we need to continue this matter. 
In the interim, please note that the building materials samples have been delivered to the building department for the board to review. The current extension for the board to render and or file a decision is through February 29th, 2024. I will add that uh, town engineer Bill Renault sent a note as well, uh, asking that we continue the matter and expressing his appreciation for the applicant to delay their project so that the town could work with them to address uh, a matter that's off the property uh, in question. Dave, you're muted. Hi, sorry, Mr. Chair. So um, actually with my, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm no longer a voting member on this application. So you may want someone who is a voting member to uh, make the motion on this one. Joe, Chip, or um, Jim, you guys are voting members on this. I move that we continue this to our next meeting. Seconded. Motion's been made, second, and any discussion? <clears throat> None. Regular voting members. Chip? Yes. Joe? Yes. Dave? No, he's not. not, <laughs> not nope. Greg? Somebody else. Yes. Greg? Yes. Uh, Jim? Yes. And I vote yes. Matters continued. Next matter, uh, a letter from Attorney Brian McGill, dated January 10, 2024, regarding a &E Realty Trust at 460, 466, and 472 Main Street. Dear Mr. Chair, please continue this matter until your meeting on January 24, 2024, and that we are still working on the Department of Public Works on the required condition to be included and the draft conditions in an operation and maintenance plan is requested by the board. We had a meeting with, with them in regard last week and I anticipate a final resolution prior to your next meeting. Thank you for, for your consideration. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we uh, continue this matter to the January 24th, 2024 meeting. Second. Motion has been made second. Any discussion? Hearing seeing none. Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. Jim? Yes. And I vote yes. That matters continued as well. And Mr. Chair, point of order, has this one already been extended, so we're covered there to uh, end of February as well? Do we know? Mr. McGrail? Yeah, um, you don't need that because there's no variances. It's all it's all um, special permits. So you have oh, that's right. This is all special days permits. After you close the hearing. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Okay, next letter is dated January 10th from attorney Jason Panos relative to the residents at Nahant 0, 119, 127, and 135 Nahant Street, Wakefield, comprehensive permit application. Dear Mr. Clerk, I mean, dear Mr. Chair, the Wakefield Zoning Board of Appeals scheduled to hear the above reference matter on January 10th, 2024 as it was continued from the hearing on December 13th, 2023. I have a conflict the evening of January 10th, which will prevent me from participating in the continued hearing. I respectfully request that the matter be continued to the board's next scheduled hearing on January 24th, 2024. Also in accordance with 760 CMR 56.053, the ZBA hearing shall not extend 180 days from the date of the opening of the hearing, except with the written consent of the applicant, the time in which the board has to close its hearing was extended, resulting from the safe harbor claim and accordingly must close on May 24, 2024. The applicant agrees to extend the time in which the BZA must close its hearing on the above matter to June 7th, 2024, resulting in from the applicant's 14 days continuance request. Please accept this as the applicant's written consent to the accordingly extend the 100 day hearing period to June 7th, 2024. Mr. Chair, I am caught up on this one, as you probably know by now. Um, so I will move that we continue this um, hearing to the January 24th, 2024 meeting, and also um, accept the um, applicant's request to extend uh, the time for the board to um, render a decision on this hearing uh, from, to June 7th, 2024. Or to close the public hearing, sorry, not render a decision. Yes. Sorry, I correct. Second. Seconded. Yep. Motion's been made. Second. And any discussion? Hearing, seeing none. Uh, Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. 
Jim, I don't think I should say anything at this because I won't continue on this anyway, being okay. that I'm leaving. Greg? I might have the same issue that Jim just did. Okay. Does it matter? Uh, let's just go ahead and vote, Greg. Sure. Yes. And I vote yes. Matt is continued. Next up, letter from attorney Brian McGrail dated January 10th, 2024, regarding Richard Hubbard and Carol Hubbard, 117 New Salem Street. Dear Mr. Chair, please continue this matter until your meeting on January 24th, 2024. And we're working to close out the Conservation Commission at their next meeting prior to moving forward with this matter. Mr. Chair, I move that we continue this um, hearing, new hearing to our January 24th, 2024 uh, meeting. Second. Motion to remain second at any discussion. Hearing seeing none. Dave. Yes. Joe. Yes. Chip. Yes. Jim. Again, same reason. Uh, Mickey. Yes. And I vote yes. Matters continue to uh, the 24th. With that, we can return to our uh, regular agenda. Uh, just make a note, Jesse, I saw your letter, but given all the continuances, I don't think this is going to be as long as you thought it was. So we're going to continue uh, with our regular agenda. If it was going to be longer, I'd give you that break, but I don't think it's going to be bad tonight. With that, next up is case 2420. 32 Nahan Street, LLC, application for a comprehensive permit pursuant to MGL Chapter 40B to authorize construction of a 32 rental units. The properties are shown on 32, 32, 8 Nahant Street. Is someone here to represent that project? Anybody? Well, that's interesting. Mr. Oh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the record, uh, Chris Sparagis uh, from the Engineering and Survey Office of Williams and, Williams and Sparagis. How are you this evening? I'm doing great. Thank you. Is your attorney here? Yes. Um, attorney uh, Jonathan um, Silverstone is uh, is present, and um, I can see him on uh, the Zoom screen. Um, I, I have a funny feeling he probably didn't think we were going to be zipping through uh, these things and get to it uh, so quickly, but um, he is present and was planning to do an, introdu an introduction to the project so that we can um, uh, introduce and do a formal presentation for the project. And I think I just I just saw him uh, jump off. He may be having trouble. So he's I'm guessing he's going to jump right back on if we can just uh, extend uh, him just a minute or two here. I am here, Mr. Chair, if you can all hear me. Yeah. Do you need a minute? We can take the next case and come back to you if you're not ready. No, no, I'm just fine. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. No, no problem. A uh, couple of notes, though, uh, uh, just for what we'd like tonight as a board. Um, if you can introduce your project team, introduce your project, give us a thousand foot view of your project with the understanding that the board understands 40B. We don't need an explanation of 40B. We don't need an explanation of how many units uh, in Wakefield uh, are in compliance with this. So if you can stick to the bread and butter of your project from a thousand feet, I think that'll be the best use of everyone's time, including your project team. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> so uh, my name is Jonathan Silverstein. I am uh, pitching in for my partner, Paul Haverty, who is primary counsel for this project. The um, uh, project engineer uh, you just heard from, uh, Chris Paragis. Uh I don't know if anyone else from the project team is uh, present, um, but uh, the, I, and I, I'm sure that the board is familiar with the procedural status of the matter uh, with respect to the safe harbor claim. I won't belabor that. Um, as you noted in reading the public hearing notice, the project is 32 units of rental housing, a mix of one, two, and three bedrooms. Um, and the uh, uh, proposal is at 32 uh, Mahan Street. And uh, a uh, project eligibility letter was issued by Mass Housing. Um, 
I don't know, Mr. Chair, if you want me to run through the list of waiver requests at this point or uh, wait until later in the proceedings. My experience generally is that uh, the waiver list uh, changes as the hearing process goes on and um, plan revisions take place during the course of the uh, the hearing. So yeah, uh, I won't. Think, and yeah, I don't think we need that. I do see Fair enough. your I do see your architect uh, on the screen. So he's yep. here. So obviously Mrs. Sparagis was here. So if you could um, get right to the like I said the bread and butter. Let's stick to an introduction of the project uh, from sure. the good view and um, and then we'll make a plan so, uh, going forward after we uh, take a comment from the board and the public. Fair enough. It's thirty two units rental housing one two and three bedrooms. Um, you have renderings of the project before you, uh, the massing of the project, uh, and uh, the project architect can speak to this, is uh, helped to be softened through the use of a mansard roof on the project. It's four stories instead of uh, three, which is what's allowed in the uh, underlying zoning. And um, we are prepared to address any questions that the board may have. Uh, short of that, I'll allow um, the project our, uh, engineer and architect to speak to the civil and design issues and address any questions the board may have. Uh, I won't uh, I won't drag it out because I know you have a long night in front of you. No, that sounds good, Peter. You you know what the board is accustomed to seeing. So if you could just walk us through that, uh, let's get right to the architecture and massing and size of the project. So Andrew, Andrew from my office is going to take it now, Andrew Jones, and he'll um, do um, what you're expecting, uh, present the project, the renderings, the plans, et cetera. Okay. Exactly. Great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, board members. Uh, Andrew Jones here from Phoenix Architects. I'll pull up the plans. Can everybody see them? That's a better view, yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so here's a uh, front graphic of uh, what it would look like from the Han Street. Um, as Jonathan uh, was first explaining, it's a four-story building, 32 units. Um, there's mostly one bedroom, 26 one bedrooms, two two bedrooms, and four three bedrooms. Um, I'll just first walk you through the floor plan. So. As you can see here, this is where Nahant Street is. We're creating a front entry, covered porch to give it a residential feel. Um, coming through on the first floor, I believe altogether there is six units. Um, the building has three points of access, the front, the side, and the rear. Um, as you can see, and once Chris kind of presents, you'll start to understand you know, the site and the context around it, but the building on the second and third floor does uh, handle lever out over some of the parking. Um, so as you can see here, this footprint to the left and this footprint behind where we're showing parking, you'll see on the second floor um, start to go over that. So that's the first floor. Um, well, I'll, I'll jump back. So as you can see, we got a few three, uh, three bedroom units. Most of the three bedroom units are around a thousand square feet. Two bedrooms are around like 750 square feet, and the one bedrooms are roughly like 650 square feet. But you'll start to begin to see that um, three bedrooms, most of the one bedrooms along this right hand side. And then also there's a mixture of a two bedroom unit right here and a one bedroom unit. Second floor, as I stated, begins to go over some of the parking. So you start to see more units on this floor. Total of 10, uh, nine one bedrooms and one three bedroom. One three bedroom being in the back left corner. Um, on the third floor, it repeats. It's very similar to the second floor. And then jumping up to the fourth floor, you'll begin to see that it comes back into its original footprint. So, what that leaves is two outdoor terraces, one that's going to be mostly for mechanical uh, HVAC uh, equipment. And the other towards the back, which actually begins to look out to the wooded area in the wetlands, is a rooftop that we plan to have for um, residents in the unit, just like a shared rooftop. 
uh, for a little outdoor access. I will begin to start to show you, this is the front elevation. So we really trying to give it a residential feel. Once again, as Jonathan mentioned, we're tucking in the fourth floor into a mansard roof line just to keep the height down. Um, as you can see over here, the total is 45 feet and three inches. Um, and then as you can see where the covered parking is, we began to make moves to make it hidden back there. So um, these cut throughs, we're doing lintels above to really add some architectural detail within the brick. Start to see the lintels once again over the windows and the apartments. And then bringing in architectural details like the pipe on brackets, uh, the boxed out bays, adding some metal roof in just to give some contrast and some color. Uh, and then as you can see, here is the rear elevation. Once again, with all the parking spots that began to become covered by the second and third story, and then here's a right elevation. And the last but not least is just a color palette and a material breakdown. So you begin to see we're using an actual brick facade on the first floor and also over the covered parking. Um, there's not really any vinyl. The builder wants to use good materials. So you'll see an LP siding, um, which is a composite. Uh, Matthews Brothers windows located in Maine. Uh, and then as you can see, architectural shingles and some nice PVC brackets. So that's basically the rundown. If you guys have any questions, I'm, I can go back and be happy to answer anything. Okay. Um, any questions, board members? I was going to move right to Mr. Sparagis, go over the site plan and locale. Sounds good. You, you good with that? Yes. Okay, great. Um, with your permission, I'll share my screen, Mr. Chairman. And I'll just bring up our site plan set. And uh, you should see our, um, our index plan here, uh, which shows um, uh, a view of the assessor's map uh, in the area. This property at, at 32 and 32A and 36. Nahan Street is centrally located in the in the town of Wakefield. We're just about, um, and as you're looking at the plan here, north is up the plan, and Nahan Street is across the uh, the front here. Uh, we're about 580 feet east of the intersection of Main Street, and where Nahan Street um, meets Main Street before crossing through, you 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 would end up on North Ave over here, so not too far away from that intersection. I uh, zoomed in now to the, um, uh, uh, before I do that, let me just zoom into this plan just a little bit, just to give you a little bit of a context on the neighborhood. Uh, our uh, locus includes an existing two family home at 32A and 32 Nahan Street, and then a single family home site at 36 Nahan Street. Uh, the property uh, directly abutting us uh, to the east is a single family home. Uh, the home abutting us to the west is a, another two-family home. And then across the street from us is a, a two-unit uh, condominium building. And then most of the other homes, as you run up and down the Han Street here on this block, are uh, single-family homes, just to kind of put things into a perspective. So going on to the uh, existing conditions plan, which is going to bring us right in at 20 scale to the property. And as a matter of fact, this is even uh, zoomed in even more. Uh, this uh, square uh, in this view on our site is 10 scale. So one inch, one inch equals 10 feet. Uh, this is the existing two family home uh, that has a, a driveway, a paved driveway that goes all the way around the side of it here. And then over on the right hand side or to the east, again, north is up the plan. We have number 36. Uh, Nahan Street, the single family home, which also has a driveway on the left hand side uh, that comes in as a paved driveway. The property area is approximately uh, 26,475 square feet. Uh, we have uh, along Nahan Street, our frontage uh, measures approximately 165 feet. And the property itself is relatively flat. Uh, elevation wise, just to uh, put a couple of numbers in your head, we're at approximately elevation 95 along the street. And most of the property slopes from the front to the back. 
uh, where the property, the land drops about two feet, so from 95 uh, to 93. Uh, when we take a look at the regional soils map, just to give you an idea of the soils, uh, it's a it's a very um, uh, a very good gravelly sandy uh, material, consisting of sands and coarse sands. Uh, the regional mapping also matches the testing that we did. Uh, we did a series of test holes on the property that were witnessed by the town engineer Bill Renault uh, back in October of 22. Uh, contains a lot of coarse fragments. And the groundwater is very deep. In fact, when we dug our test holes, uh, we were down eight to nine feet below the surface and we did not encounter the groundwater surface at all. Uh, you may remember um, Andrew uh, mentioned that uh, the town owns a, a, a rather large piece of property uh, to the rear. If I go back to the index plan, this is an open space parcel owned by the town of Wakefield. And much of it is, is wet, but it is much lower in elevation so if we were to go from our rear lot line and go north onto the town owned parcel, we go back about hundred feet, it then starts to drop off about 23 feet downhill. And right at the toe of the slope is where uh, the wetland transition line is. It's a very simple wetland to see. It's a, what we call a toe of slope wetland. And that wetland, um, we delineated that as well back in uh, January of, um, of 22. Uh, and we uh, we have a, the buffer zone from that wetland just clips the northwest portion of the property here. We're not proposing um, any activity within the buffer zone to the wetland. Uh, I talked about the properties uh, to the left and to the right of us. And, um, and so now let's move on to the proposed development plan so that you can see the layout. And the layout is, is uh, rather simple. I'm gonna go to a, a plan that's the most simple to read, which is our layout plan. This shows in a gray color, the footprint of the proposed building. And on the first floor, the building footprint is smaller. Mm -hmm. um, it is just this small rectangle, as Andrew mentioned earlier. That allows us to have some parking spaces um, right next to the building along uh, the west side and some spaces along the north side so that when you get up to the second floor, uh, these parking spaces end up being uh, covered. So they're covered spaces. Uh, there are 13 of them, although they are open to the air. Um, after uh, these parking spaces, uh, we have our main access uh, location out front here. It's a 24 foot wide driveway that comes in um, north, south, and then from west to east to access the parking field. We have a total of 48 parking spaces. And when you divide uh, 48 by the 32 units, it yields a, a parking ratio of one and a half parking spaces per unit. We have a handicap accessible parking in the rear of the building where our accessible access point is uh, for folks that, um, uh, that require wheelchair access. Uh, that's our wheelchair ramp here. And we also have a sidewalk uh, that runs the length of the rear of the building here along the back of these parking spaces. We have another sidewalk that connects this one uh, from the back of the building to the front of the building. And this is, a, this is a section of sidewalk that would be undercover. And then we have another sidewalk in front of the building uh, that allows folks who park in the parking lot uh, towards the front of the property to uh, come onto the sidewalk and enter the front of the building here. What I didn't mention is that in the existing condition and what we will end up with in the proposed condition is that um, along the right of way of Nahan Street, uh, there is a sidewalk um, that runs right along our frontage. It's a paved uh, sidewalk and uh, we will obviously be uh, maintaining that sidewalk. Uh, minor detail out front here. Uh, this is the driveway cut for the single family home at 36. We're gonna be uh, closing that off and providing a curb section here and fixing that sidewalk. From a utilities standpoint, um, Wakefield uh, water and sewer are readily available to us. If we go back one sheet to our utility plan, uh, it's a very simple on, the, on our proposed utilities. Uh, we have sewer access and then water for our fire flow and domestic flow uh, right in front of the building, short runs 
out to the utilities that are right in front of us in the Hunt Street, and if allowed by uh, Wakefield uh, Gas and Light, um, excuse me, uh, let me back up a little bit. Not sure yet on how we're gonna be uh, fueling the building. I know there was a moratorium on new gas connections on the previous project we worked on, so we'll be reaching out to Wakefield Gas and Light to uh, confirm that. But for electric service, uh, we have a, a utility pole run that runs right across the front of the property, and we propose to go underground uh, from that location right to the right to the building on a short run. Uh, stormwater management, of course, is uh, is always uh, an important part of the project. Uh, I think uh, you remember that I mentioned. Uh, that the property is relatively flat, so we don't have to do much uh, in terms of changing the lay of the land. We are picking up the back of the site a little bit uh, back in this corner here, which is going to require a, a relatively short retaining wall of about 57 feet long. It's only a, it's less than three feet high, and in most cases, it's only a couple of feet high. This just allows us to pitch the parking lot drainage back to our low point. Uh, where we're proposing a deep sump catch basin, a proprietary pretreatment device before going into um, our uh, stormwater uh, management system, which is going to be a subsurface infiltration system that provides for infiltration and for storage of stormwater. Uh, our roof runoff will be uh, directly connected um, because it's considered clean, uh, and the stormwater management system is rather rather simple and. Uh, we are lucky on this project where we have very good soils um, that allow us to uh, to infiltrate uh, quite a bit of water. And so um, as far as civil engineering goes on projects, this proposed project um, is, is very straightforward from a utility standpoint. Uh, we do have a, a landscape plan and the plan set, and we can talk about that as we um, as we go on. Uh, we have landscaping proposed across the front of the building and, and some street trees. Um, and we also have a proposed lighting plan, very simple. Uh, we only need four uh, parking lot uh, light poles on this uh, 24, 25,000 square foot lot uh, with um, LED fixtures. So that, that should be very straightforward as well. And then finally, we are proposing a privacy fence um, along the western boundary line of our property and the eastern boundary line, a six foot high vinyl fence uh, that'll be set um, uh, just about six inches off the property line left and right of the property. And we would like to keep the back of the property open uh, because it is nice looking out at the uh, open space in the back. Um, that concludes my formal presentation, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll turn it back over to you uh, to see if you folks have any questions for us. Okay, Mr. Silverstein, is that the... Uh... The entirety of your presentation. That's it for now, Mr. Chair. My, my suggestion would be uh, that we answer any question, preliminary questions the board may have, and then we can talk about what, if any, peer reviews the board wants to um, conduct in advance of the next hearing session. So, okay, before we get to the board, who I'm sure does have questions, um, we do have some correspondence from. Uh, the professional departments in the town. Uh, first one's from the Wakefield Fire Department, dated November 7th. Mr. Silverstein, I'm not sure if you're in possession of these. I am not at this point, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, there's some pretty standard stuff uh, in the beginning of the letter, but uh, the fire chief does. Uh, it's signed by Chief Michael Sullivan. Um, he does have some safety concerns on this. That I'm going to read into the record here, and and uh, I'll share this letter with uh, uh, you as well, or I'll have Gail do it to you. Uh, a couple of the key points he's making here. Uh, the proposed site plan shows that the fire department access will be possible to this building on three sides of the building. Since the majority of emergency response to the site likely to be non-fire related, for example, emergency medical calls, not enough attention seems to be given to how emergency vehicles will exit the property. The parking lot as shown provides no means for emergency vehicles to turn around such as circle or hammerhead design. A reduction in the size of the building, perhaps the elimination of the overhangs on the second and third floors of the building might allow for the building to be relocated enough to provide an exit driveway on the east side of the building. The reduction in the number of units in the building would provide more off-street parking. 
The creation of an exit driveway would allow for the safe departure of emergency vehicles and delivery trucks leaving the property. Second point of, uh, that I wanted to add in, the proposal includes 48 parking spaces for 32 units containing 47 bedrooms with limited parking available for visitor parking. The narrative supplied regarding this proposal indicates 26 single bedroom, two two bedroom and four three bedroom apartments for a total of 32 units. The lack of visitor parking will result in overflow parking in the adjoining streets or worsen into designated fire lanes. Third major point regarding safety from the chief, the proposed four story height of the building will make fire department access to the roof difficult by aerial ladder truck due to the steep angle required for the aerial to deploy. Inside access to the roof area must include full size stairway and door for roof access. The height and size of the building should be reduced in height to improve fire department access and available parking for the remaining units. There's other points there, but uh, those were the key ones uh, that I saw. There's also correspondence from the Department of Public Works from Tim Wilson, Senior Civil Engineer, dated November 14th. Again, some of them are minor. Uh, a couple of uh, points uh, that I wanted to bring up that seem to rise to a, a higher level to me. Uh, the DPW recommends denying the applicant's request to waive the town stormwater drain system and stormwater management bylaw requirements. The project proposes significant increases to an impervious surface cover on the site, which could increase the runoff leaving the site to the abutting properties. The applicant should be updated to include a, the application should be updated to include its stormwater report with appropriate calculations and stormwater controls to facilitate DPW's review. Please note that the test tool should be conducted and witnessed by DPW for any infiltrative BMPs to be installed on the subject parcels. It's it's four pages and there's some pretty technical things in here and but there's some significant concerns by the DPW as well. I'll make sure that you get that letter as well, Mr. Silverstein. So the board should know that both the fire department has significant safety concerns and the DPW uh, is seeking more information and has other concerns as it relates to stormwater as well. Uh, and the, the amount of impervious surface that's being created by the proposed development. So with that, uh, I'm gonna, I see Jim's hand up, Jim. We'll go to you first. Okay, um, so I don't know why every one of these projects that come along now with 40 Bs have to asphalt the whole site from property line to property line. And this is another one of these cases where this is doing that. There's, there's hardly a blade of, blade of grass and we're gonna give this project three trees and a few shrubs. I mean, this is just ridiculous. And at the same time, it, you know, you get all this parking and I don't understand, and we won't until later, basically, how the traffic light down the street, which causes a huge backup, is going to allow people to even get out of this site going either direction, basically. It's almost like there ought to be another traffic light in front of this thing. It's just insane. And it has, the size of this doesn't really compensate the neighborhood in any way unless the project plans on the neighborhood changing and everything basically it's going to be a comp you know four-story apartment complex up and down the street but we got we got two-story buildings here single families so i i don't know how this even plays against the neighborhood at all and gives it any relevance to the neighborhood it's it's a pimple a big pimple basically and it's asphalted from corner to corner, that would, that, I mean, we got, there's a lot of work on this to be done, basically. And I just comment what I see right now, but I'm sure there's a lot of comments coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jim. I'll add uh, also, Mr. Silverstein, that part of the DPW memo um, mirrors what Mr. Uh, McBain said regarding traffic and concerns about traffic uh, and traffic signalization, especially at the main street and um, Nahan Street intersection. So, Mickey? Well, my thing was a, a little bit off of Jim's. As we go further into massing and so on and so forth, it'd be nice to know what um, the context is in the neighborhood, just how this rises above or or meets the same height as the uh, surrounding houses, which I'm sure it doesn't, but it'd be uh, nice to get a sense of that. 
The other one is uh, um, I'd like to know how what what is the setback from the uh, from the Han Street in your drawings? Sure, the setback uh, from Nahan Street uh, to the front of the building is uh, 16 feet to the street line, which is the back of the sidewalk out in front of um, the street. Super, that's intense. But, um, and one other question, what are, what are the sizes of those um, parking spaces? So the parking spaces, um, we have, um, let's see, 31 parking spaces at eight and a half by 18. And then uh, 15 parking spaces at nine by 18, and then two handicap spaces. Those are tight. Anyway, um, my main point is uh, more context as to what this is going to look like. I agree that it's way too big. And B, um, having it's okay to have a few of those small spaces, but when you have them all, it's um, it's tight for everybody. That's all. Thank you, Mickey. Greg. Yeah, after hearing those comments um, in the letters from the DPW and from the, the chief around sort of safety issues, and, and then I think it was Andrew, might have been Chris, who said, you know, the design or running through the design is pretty simple. I'd have to agree. It is pretty simple. There seems no creativity to this to make those those safety issues that you had to have known would come up. I think you know, in, in doing my research that, you know, the owner is a seasoned developer, had to have known those would come up. There seems to be no creativity. I think I saw something in, you know, looking at some of the earlier uh, meetings or requests from town council that there would be, um, you know, possibly looking into doing townhouses or another design here. And this looks to be the same design that has been, uh, proposed from the beginning with very minimal minimal changes you know if, if it is a yeah it's a flat area but if you want to make something work you got to get creative and this seems to be completely far off to anything that would be safe in this area mm. thank you greg chip you are mute chip i head back to the safety and traffic as well I'd like to know where we stand with, have they presented to the traffic advisory committee yet? Mr. Silverstein, have you guys even scoped out a traffic, what the traffic report would look like? And have you consulted the town's um, tra traffic advisory committee, which includes the police and DPW as to what you would be studying as part of this with the traffic? Uh, I don't believe so. I think Chris might uh, be able to confirm whether or not that's happened but uh, i will say that in our application materials we indicated a willingness to do a traffic study and suggested that that would be something we would want to talk to the board about so that we could get your input on what traffic um what intersections and streets you would want to see studied if you want us to have that conversation with um the traffic commission we're certainly happy to do that so just to let you know, Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Chair, through you, uh, Chris Sparada speaking, uh, the uh, property owner has uh, uh, in, uh, started discussions with uh, Vanessa and Associates, and uh, they're putting together a scope of work uh, for a traffic uh, impact study, um, just to let you know. Thank you. Yeah. So given, given that, Mr. Chairman, uh, to me, it feels like this application is incomplete uh, because that's one of our most important issues is traffic being so close to the intersection being the Han street that we're starting a high school right up the other end of this um to me that's part that should have been part of the application process and to try to fit that into the 180 days that we then have to make a decision i think is unfair to this board so i would request uh through you of somehow until they get their traffic study, until they address all the safety issues, that our timetable doesn't start on this. Because to me, I can't even think of, you know, all the comments about two large, four stories, everything else is single and two families around it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, all the comments are correct. But to me, safety is the utmost issue with, with kids walking on the street and everything else. 
uh, you know, you got 45 feet popping up 16 feet from the road. I mean, there's, there's nothing safe about this. So until we had the traffic advisory council, look at this, uh, to me, I think it's, it's premature to start the clock. That's my opinion. Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, wait till after all the comments in, but I think that's a very valid opinion that I want to return to, Chip. Thank you. All right, uh, Kasumi, we haven't heard from you yet. Um, I I agree with everybody else. This is like too big for the site, and I would like to see, like for example, I want to see the relationship with this building to the the house on the right side of this site, and because that's like, um two-story house like it's gonna tower over that house and then also I can see on the traffic safeties um there's no like a visitor parking so I can see right away the mailman in ways the uh the main entrance is located I can see the mailman Amazon guy uh FedEx guy is gonna just park on the Hunt Street and then mm. drop off all the mails packages and that's gonna take with the 32 apartment probably like 20 30 minutes if everybody's buying you know things so definitely like the number of the units should be reduced and we should they should be like re redesigned that that was my point okay thank you uh jim i see him but i'm gonna go dave first so we get the All right. commented yet go ahead dave thank you mr chair <clears throat> yeah so um, a lot of the same concerns raised by other board members uh, about the overall um, size and scope um, presented, uh, particularly interested in the fire chief's comments as well about safety um, and access to the site um, and being able to to go completely around the site, um, et cetera. So I think those need to be addressed by the applicant. Um, you know, and then, yeah, lesser down the road, yeah, the parking, you know, technically by the bylaw, 50 is required for the number of um, um, bedrooms, um, and there aren't, you know, so they're deficient already. And having so many compact spaces, Mickey picked up on it, and I noticed it as well. You know, yeah, we've done projects with a few compact spaces to kind of make things work or to accommodate compact cars. But having 31 out of your 48 spaces, right, you're really trying to squeeze a lot of parking in just to meet, you know, just to make it work. And you've designated none as visitor. And there's no parking on North F, I mean, on Nard Street um, for visitors, it really, so in, in this area. So for safety as well, you know, it, assuming we continue to go forward with this and get into the details, we got to make sure that some of the parking is designated visitor. And if that means reducing the overall unit count so that some parking can be designated visitor, uh, more of the spaces can be full size and and still meet the parking count by the bylaw, then I think, you know, we're, we're in a better position going forward. And Chip, I, you know, I tend to agree with you that, you know, the application should have included at least a traffic study on their part. I think we've seen that pretty much on all of them that they've at least already done their own study, even if they didn't go to the TAC yet, which can typically run in parallel and then we have them in a meeting. But I do agree, it's it's incomplete in that sense. They, they, the applicants almost always have their own study done and included as part of the package. And that kind of puts us behind April because now that all has to be done and that takes time. So I don't know, that, you know, we've officially opened it, so I don't know that we can stop the clock, but I think the applicant is gonna have to be aware that we're probably gonna have to be open to, you know, moving that 180 days out as needed um, to to get to a point where we, you know, this board could potentially even vote on this. So uh, those are my initial comments, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you, Dave. Jim, go back to you. Yes. Uh, just to sort of follow up on uh, what Mickey brought up, I wasn't thinking, and that way even Dave's brought it up as well. When you start reducing the size of the parking lots, even though you've asphalted property line to property line, you still can't fit the number of parking spaces you needed. And so you're reducing the, I don't I don't think this board should allow any reduction of both parking, nor for that matter, in the size of the lot, the size of the spaces for parking, just because you haven't got enough asphalt basically to spread around. So consideration really has to be handled here to, to take this to what it really, what can really fit here and not, you know, ask for smaller spaces or not to have this or not to have that. And to Kasumi's thing, you know, it's, you're going to get deliveries. More and more these days are you going to get deliveries. So what are you providing for space? So there's a lot just on a on a ground plane to talk about and think about 
and redesign to make it work. And I agree with Chip, basically. I think there's we really need to know what's going on the street because I don't see the number of cars here coming out here and, and getting into that traffic line that happens because of the light down the street. Nor for that matter, people going in the opposite direction and getting through that tra traffic to turn around and go up the street. Uh, it's it, it's just, this is a, this is just a problem. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> so, Mr. Silverstein, I'm just going to add my voice to. I, I agree totally with my colleagues. Uh, one of the public safety. Uh, subject matter experts in our town has uh, that we count on has expressed some serious concern. It's been some serious concern about traffic. I don't know how, uh, as you go up and down the street and look at one and mostly single family homes, some two family homes, that you drop 32 units into the middle of that and and believe that that, you know, into that context, someone's going to have to explain that to me because I don't get that at all. And like I said, I'm going to open it up to public comment in a minute, but I do want to return to uh, Mr. Taubell's comments about an incomplete application and a uh, possible uh, request for an extension from the applicant. But with that, I uh, am going to open it up to uh, public comment. If you'd like to comment on the uh, what you've heard tonight, I'm going to ask you that you use the raise hand function in Zoom. Um, so is anyone here to comment on this proposal? Brandon Napstad, it's not exactly the raise hand function in Zoom, but I thought I saw your hand up. So are you here to comment on that? Uh, I wasn't initially, but I'm a resident of Stark Avenue, which is a street off of Nahant. Um, and, um, you know, I am glad to hear that you guys are putting such um, strong thought into this as a resident off of Nahant um, on a dead end street we're highly impacted by the traffic patterns on Nahant and the safety issues that you guys are bringing up um, you know there's another similar proposal on our street from I believe the same developer um, and uh, you know it's it's you, they're really trying to push the limits of, of what we can fit into this small area that's already congested enough um, so I just want to reiterate those concerns and thank the board for, for taking these things so seriously. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Going once, going twice. I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. Back to the board. Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Silverstein, I, I agree with Mr. Tarbell. In some ways, to me, this seems uh, an incomplete application, given the, the, the concerns we've heard about traffic and uh, size, which result in both the traffic and the size result in public you know safety concerns. Until we have all the information regarding that, which would include um, a traffic report that's been you know, reviewed with the traffic advisory committee. Um, and then we, we could have the fire chief and the, the police uh, representatives here. I really um, want you to start thinking about extending the 180 days for this application. I know we're just presenting these to you tonight, but I, I think uh, it would be in the best interest of your uh, project and the town and this board if we had more time. And um so I don't know if anyone want to add anything to that, Mr. Tarbell, was your idea. But um, until we have all that information, I don't think the 180 days should be running, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I just don't know much, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure how much control we have over that, honestly, without discussing with town council. But um, we could certainly, you know, follow up offline. I'm sure. We, I would we, just add the stormwater report again. We've seen that typically done up front if they have a proposed design. They sometimes also have the stormwater report. We've seen that, right? And they didn't, they don't have that yet. They have a system proposed, but to fill the entire site with pavement impervious material, um, they should have a stormwater report and how they're going to manage all that and show that that's, this, that it's going to work, right? Uh, Dave, so, my, my point is that, that to, to extend this, the applicant has to extend it. I'm asking the applicant. I'm not asking our town council. 
this applicant should extend the 180 days until we get all the safety information that we need. Oh, oh I agree. I thought about not the clock not running. Like that was the part I, I don't know that we have okay. any control. If I it's, it's right. running. It's oh, just, well, yeah. I know. We should, yeah, we <laughs> uh, but yeah, agreed. Yeah. So any reaction? I don't, you know, I know we'll put you on the spot here and you might want to go talk to your client, but it's something I want you to seriously consider. So, Mr. Chair, I hear you. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not the primary counsel on, on this project. I'll, I'll speak with my partner uh, and we'll certainly speak with um, the project team and our client. I will note that from a technical standpoint, our project's complete. We submitted what we were required to submit under the uh, applicable regulations with um, our application. I hear you saying that you would like to see more. Uh, I do believe that Chris has uh, submitted stormwater, a stormwater report now, though it was just today. So understandably, the board hasn't had an opportunity to look at it, um, but it has, uh, I believe it has been submitted. Um, and uh, we've heard all of the concerns that are, that have been laid out in um, the comments today and we'll consider them and, provide responses to them. I'm, as you, uh, uh, I appreciate you acknowledging, I'm not in a position uh, to grant any extensions at this point. Uh, I will say in my experience, it's very unusual on the first hearing date to grant any extensions. Um, rather, it usually is as the, the deadline is approaching and you see what matters are outstanding and what additional information needs to be determined. At that point, we start talking about extensions, but I've never seen uh, an extension granted uh, on the very first uh, hearing date uh, from the 180 days uh, requirements. So I, I'm not saying no, I'm just uh, giving you my initial reaction, um, but I will, pass all this information along to uh, my partner and uh, we'll have those conversations with the project team and our client and we'll be in a position to respond to a lot of these comments, I think, by the next hearing session. Yep, sure. And, and I'll just add that it's unusual for us to get such a strongly worded letter from our public safety expert, the fire chief, on a proposal. So, you know, it is, uh, while I hear you on the first hearing asking for an extension might be unusual, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a very unusual circumstance for the board as well. So, you know, we might want to be doing some creative thinking here, how we're going to go forward. Because as we plot out our next um, few hearings and what we're going to discuss, um, the massing, size of the project, site plan, those all are going to have an impact on safety. Um, so I think... I think they're important. But I see a couple of hands raised. Chip? I, Mickey can go first. I want to get my thoughts. Oh, sorry. Open. Mickey, I didn't see you there. Um, oh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Silverstein, when are you um, going to have your traffic report submitted to us? And when are you going to be in front of the Traffic Advisory Committee? Or have you even thought think, of it, which is even which is even more upsetting if you don't have dates for it? I think uh, Chris can probably speak to that. Uh, he indicated that we're scoping the traffic report right now with Vanessa and Associates, uh, and um, we will see what they have to say about uh, what they think makes sense from a scope. And then at that point, I would imagine uh, we'd be in a position to uh, provide you with an update on time. Chris, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, typically um, what we'll do is uh, reach out to uh or what the traffic engineer will do, we'll reach out to Bill Renault, the town engineer, and to the fire chief and to the lieutenant um, to uh, discuss uh, scope of work, just to make sure that uh, that we capture all of the most important information that, that's important to the public safety officials so that we can try to capture as much information in the first go around. Uh, and then once we uh, have that information, you know, we, we will submit it to the board. And once we do that, uh, you know, with your permission, we'll schedule a, a meeting with the um, TAC. Okay. I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but what happens with these large-scale projects and and uh, oddly um, uh, difficult spot projects is 
this exact thing. And then we end up getting uh, the primary concern. And quite frankly, one of the things that gives our board more leverage to have a deeper review on these projects is safety concerns. And we don't know what they are until the last month. That is, um, uh, that, that's, that's, that's something that um, we don't like to see. So uh, as quickly as possible, and I'll, I'll stop there. We'd like to see those. Thank you, Mickey. Jim? Um, if I heard Chris right in his original presentation, he basically said this, they're still negotiating or, you know, talking. They haven't got somebody signed on. They know who they're talking to or maybe others, but they haven't got anybody signed on. So we still, they've still got to get somebody signed on to actually start the work. And on top of that, it's, you know, to, to Chip's point for the moment, it's winter. It's not, it's not the spring. You know, this could have been done earlier knowing this project was moving ahead and done in a, in a more in, in a more appropriate environment. Now it's winter. I don't, I'm not sure that winter doesn't either exacerbate or make it, uh, or make it um, easier basically for this project. But I think to the point is this is a, this is a problem area and this is an important point to be hashed out and understood by this group as well as others. And if we're just, you know, getting around to negotiating an idea as to what services we want. And, and then of course, as Chris already indicated, then we got to sit down and talk to the local authorities as to what they're looking for. And like, we are a ways away from getting any sort of traffic report to this group, period. Thank you. Yep. Chip? Yeah, the, the other thing I think we're missing tonight, Mr. Chairman, and we didn't address, we addressed the architect and the civil engineer. We didn't address the owner. Who's the owner? What have they done? Where are there other projects we can look at? What's their experience? What's their financial ability? I mean, I know that you have to do finances through the state, but at the same time, we should have a list of other projects that have done. We should know what their uh what what their ability and capability are. And I don't think we see that. I haven't seen any of that or heard any of that yet. So for the next meeting, I'd like, a, you know, the best I can tell the owner isn't even here tonight. So that doesn't excite me a whole lot. Chair, uh, it's in the, it's for in the you, uh, for your here. Excuse me, Chair. I am here. Yep. It's in the booklet, Chip, that they sent out. It's in our application. Yeah, but that's usually team. part of the first presentation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of the past experience is in there. And he wasn't even <laughs> introduced tonight. I wasn't even at what tonight? Introduced. Introduced. I am Scott Green, owner and developer. I I've, was... worked, with, I've worked with you, Chip. I know you have, but your name wasn't even brought up in the presentation. Respectfully, I, Mr. Chair, I want to work as a to team. Be cognizant oh, of your request that I keep things brief and move on to, and that we move on to the engineering and architecture issues. I didn't think that there was going to be quarreling over the experience of the applicant. I'm happy to give a presentation on that if that's important to the board. No, it's just um, I did ask you to introduce your team. So, and he wasn't introduced. So I, I don't want to belabor that, but um, anyway, so looking forward board members, uh, we usually cover massing architecture site uh, first. How are you feeling about that given safety concerns um, and other things? Uh, I'll ask the board what they would like to see next. What, what, what do we want for the next hearing? Well, if we're going to try to keep this moving, we're certainly not going to get anything on the safety and traffic for the next meeting. So I think we all made presentation that that it's way too big and trying to stick way too much on the on the site that they're looking for. So I guess the next thing would be to try to convince us that it's not too big if this is what where they want to stay. So massing massing is probably the next important step without without traffic to discuss. 
I mean, I, I think Chris makes a point. It's a it's a pretty simple site from a civil engineering standpoint and from drainage. Not a whole lot of retaining walls is not a but but the massing fitting into the neighborhood size of the project. All important things to discuss. And I would want to have a presentation directly on how either they think basically directly on the points in the letter from from Chief Sullivan. Uh, I mean, if the building itself isn't even safe, then traffic doesn't matter. I agree. Or it becomes secondary. <laughs> For, for yeah, sure. But it's secondary. Yeah. As part of the massing and context, right? As I said earlier, I'd I'd love to hear how either the architect or somebody is trying to make sense of dropping this thing into a, a bunch of single and two family houses, mostly single family houses, thirty two units. It's so out of context. It's it's staggering uh, to me. So, uh, anything else, board? Any other instructions we want to leave to the uh, their project team before we move forward and probably continue this to? But Silverstein, I'm assuming you're going to want to come back to twenty fourth. No, I think it makes sense to continue it to your first meeting in February. In February, okay. I have a quick request I, uh, on that safety thing. I probably and. I guess I'll take direction from the other board members too. It probably doesn't make sense to just come back and report to us on how they either want to address or how they think they can address the chiefs. I mean, I think they should probably talk to the fire department, right? Like it's instead of just having them come say, here's X, Y, and Z, they need to sit down and figure out how to do this. I, I, I think, Greg, we want to have that discussion in the public meeting, which is why uh, I go back to Chip's comment. I'd love to see the full public safety package. And so that as part of this hearing process, we can have a representative from both the police department and the fire department and from the yep. Department of Public Works uh, to go over those matters. Um, so neighbors and the board can be part of those discussions and we're not relying on reports yeah. back to the board that could be, uh, I'm not gonna suggest that they would be in yeah. the or there'd be any ill intent there, but it's, it's helpful to hear firsthand is what I'll say. Sure. Mr. Chair, if I if I could uh, ask a question, uh, Chris Sparagis again, uh, and I know it's early in the project, but because um, all the members seem to be concerned mostly about uh, Chief Sullivan's uh, letter regarding public safety, um, it has been the practice of the Zoning Board of Appeals in the past to set up a subcommittee to deal with certain issues. And, uh, and if it's easier for the chief, for example, to meet during regular business hours, uh, maybe we maybe it does make sense to set up a subcommittee uh, of a couple of members uh, to go together with us to go visit with the chief and any other public safety official to try to to try to you know get through some of these major major issues to make sure we can get at least on the same page with the chief. I don't know if that makes sense sense to you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate the suggestion, but I'm I'm not ready to do that right now. I think I want uh, I want the full board to hear. Um, on these safety issues. I think they're significant and I think they, they go beyond the work of a subcommittee. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd just jump on too. If we're talking about massing and we've all talked about how big it is, I'd like to see if they come back at that next meeting and have done anything about that. Have they reduced it? Have they, you know, we've, we've talked about the massing and that it's too big and not fitting into the neighborhood. So my question would be, do they come back and just say, this is what you're going to get, and then we move forward with safety? Or, you know, safety becomes a different thing if we start redesigning or downsizing this project. Exactly. And that's so, so I think the, massing yeah. is is an, an interesting conversation and see how much movement there is in the next meeting. Uh, Mr. Silverstein, do we? Uh, I'm assuming Gail. Do we have his partner's email address so we can get him these letters from the town? You do. Yes, okay. we do. I do. Okay. Great. Okay, so I think um, with that, we're we're ready for a vote to continue the matter. What's the date for the first week in February? Mm -hmm. For the first I, meeting in February, I don't have it. Um, the fourteenth. <laughs> So the, the, yeah, well, we the, get ourselves in trouble on Valentine's Day every year. <laughs> well, well, that's a, this is my, you know, <laughs> Mr. Silverstein said it's 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 unusual to 
to ask for continuance, but we're already going essentially 30 days out on the 180. And I, I don't know, we don't have any public safety information from them at all. We don't have any traffic. I'm really concerned about this. So, but that being said, if you're not going to be ready to come back on the 20, you know, our next meeting, I don't want to waste our time either. So uh, I think Chip will, will take your motion for the, the, the meeting in February. I move that we continue this to the first meeting in February, February 14th, as requested by the applicant. Second. Well, if they're waiting, if they want to wait a month, I wonder if we should at least extend the period because they can't come back with the relevant information we're looking for between now. Mr. And Chair, now. I'm fine if you if you if the board wants to continue it to the 24th, then we can put it on the 24th and we can um, be prepared to um, address some of the comments that we heard tonight. Uh, respectfully, the reason I suggested putting it out a month is because there were apparently some pretty substantive letters that the board received regarding the application that we've never seen. So, you know, we're not in a position to respond to multi-page letters that have not been provided to us before tonight. Uh, and that was my thought on, on putting it out a month, but why don't we put it out two weeks? And we can see what we can accomplish in two weeks, and then um, can go from there. I, I, I have no issue with that. I was trying to be uh, respectful of the, of the board's agenda and time at your next meeting. But um, you know, I, not having seen these letters, I'm not in a position to know how long it's going to take our team to respond to them. Okay, Chip. Why don't we move to the 24th and let's see what they have. I, I move that we continue this to January 24th. Second the amended motion. Motion been made, second, and any discussion? At Dave, or you're shaking your head if you feel like we should extend to February. Oh, no, no, I had no discussion. No discussion. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Regular voting members, Chip? Yes. Joe? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jim? Uh, again, pass. Okay. Uh, let's go, Mickey. Yes. And I vote yes. We'll continue to the uh, next meeting in January. I appreciate your time and your presentation tonight, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, moving along. On to new hearings. Hearing 2428-2429, Christopher and Sierra Newman for a project at 28 Brewster Road. Someone here to represent... Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, uh, Attorney Brian McGrail with offices at 607 North Avenue in Wakefield here on behalf of the applicants, uh, Christopher and Sierra Newman. If I may proceed. Uh, please do, Brian. Great. Uh, um, also, uh, for the record, uh, I, I should state that Chris and Sierra are both logged on. They're here and they're on the screen. Yeah, we're here. Hello. Uh, they're the owners and residents of 28 Brewster Road. Um, some of their neighbors are also here in support, which you will hear. Um, and uh, also with us tonight um, is Molly Richter, who is uh, the architect uh, for the board. Uh, this is an application. It's two applications. It's an application for a variance um, from Article 6, Table 2 of the bylaw for dimensional relief, and also for a, a determination into a finding with respect to a continuation extension of a nonconformity under Article 9, Section 19050. Um, as I've mentioned, um, the property is at 28 Brewster Road. I think the best way to go about this is we have a kind of a PowerPoint presentation with uh, that encompasses and includes the materials that have already been submitted to the board. There was one little tweak to the site plan uh, that I will show you that I submitted a copy of that to you and uh, Gail uh, this afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, and this is just a cover sheet. It's been revised through today because that's when the site plan was updated, and we will get into the details of that. Can you see my screen okay? We can. Great. I'm going to shrink this down. So this is the existing condition site plan. Um, and um, you can see it's a sing it's a single family home. It's a Cape style home, which you'll see from the pictures. Um, 
and I think uh, I want to take note that the deficiencies of the lot, the nonconformities re relate really to the lot and to some setbacks. And I'll get into the details of that with the proposed plan, which is next. Uh, but as far as the lot goes, and this kind of goes to the uniqueness of the uh, variance request, it's deficient on lot width, 80 feet. When this lot was created, there was an 80 foot uh, frontage requirement in the single residence district, which later in the 1950s went up to um, I think it was 54, went up to 100 feet and went up to 12,000 square feet. Um, so this was, um, so there is deficiency in the uh, lot, um, uh, the frontage, the lot width and the area, which goes to our uniqueness when we get to the standards of the variance. And I also want to point out as far as the uniqueness of the structure goes, you can see how it is situated, oddly situated to one side of the property. 14 foot setback on the left and currently a 34.7 setback on the right. And that becomes very apparent when we get into the photographs, which will be part of our presentation. So this is what is being proposed. Um, they are proposing an addition, which will include a garage and a, a, an enlargement of the kitchen, uh, kind of a four year mud room, uh, a family room, and then some bedroom space upstairs. They also want to put a proposed deck on the back this is the change that was updated today. The architectural plans that we had submitted had reflected the deck, but the proposed site plan did not. So it was just added in today. So that's the only minor change. And you can see now there's been an updated revision date of today's date for 110-24 uh, reflecting that. Um, we provided a zoning table, um, which I'd like to um, go through. So as I mentioned, um, it's on the bottom left here. Um, the lot area is required in the single residence district now is 12,000 square feet. This is existing legal nonconforming at 8,052. Nothing's changing on that, obviously. Frontage is 100 feet and the existing is 80. Uh, and that also goes for the lot width, which I've already mentioned. Uh, the front yard setback required in the single residence district is 20 feet. It's existing at 22.5. That's not going to change. The survey had just referenced to 23 because the addition is going to be 23, but the, the setback in the front is going to remain conforming to current requirements. Um, side yard is 15 feet. Uh, they referenced that it's 14.3 feet on this side, which is which is legal nonconforming. 15 is required, as you can see. Um, where the request for the variance comes is on the other side, where I have pointed out is 34.7 in order to uh, properly fit this addition in, uh, we're requesting um, a variance of the setback from 15 down to eight on, on the right side as you uh, face the property. Uh, rear yard, a 25 foot requirement. Uh, it's currently 50 feet. And with our addition, we're gonna be at 34.5, well within um, regulation. And building coverage required is no greater than 30%. It's currently at only 10%. We're gonna be at 22.9 and again, uh, in compliance with current requirements. In open area required um, has to be 40%. It's currently 82.2 and the, re the proposed will be 72. Again, um, well within compliance. So this just is kind of a, a satellite view. It just gives you an idea of, this is off of Forrester Road, Brewster Road. Um, you can you can see uh, Hancock Street, Pleasant Street. It's kind of tucked in, just to give you an idea. Uh, this is this is the this is Main Street on the lake, so that gives you it's kind of off on the lake side. We thought it'd be helpful to give some context uh, images of the property as you kind of approach from the west, um, heading in, um, and this is this is the subject property at Twenty Eight Brewster. And you can see the uniqueness here of how it's really like offset in the lot. It has this kind of uh, driveway and then it's just kind of a, an open kind of like missing space here. Um, and I also wanted to show the property um, right here because this is our property in the yellow. Um, the property that will be most affected by this is right here. And I wanted to point out, and you, you'll see that it's, it's on an angle so it really doesn't have any um, windows directly facing our addition. So that's, you know, adds to the unique, unique circumstance. We just thought some more photos would be helpful. The front facade. And then this is the side and the other side. 
and then the current rear. We thought it would be helpful to provide some of butter uh, images with addresses as you know, similar homes. And you'll see we've also gone to the extent of showing that a lot of homes in this area have really put on additions similar uh, in a similar nature to what's being proposed here. A lot of them have the bump out um, similar to what's being proposed. And we thought this angle would help. And, and these folks that live in this house that I keep uh, pointing to, I believe they're here tonight and, and you'll hear from them. But um, it's kind of unique how this house faces. It's kind of on a corner. So as I've mentioned, our addition, you know, the windows really, they kind of don't go at each other, if you will. There'll be a, a maintenance of privacy, notwithstanding the eight foot setback. That's the property of 32 Drury, Drury Lane. Again, another photo showing the location of the addition. You have some unique topography in the back here also, as you can see. And then we wanted to kind of show uh, in this area um, that additions of this nature have been done, uh, as I've mentioned. Um, six booster, you can see, eight. So this is a kind of a common theme for, for you know, kind of, I think, a neighborhood that was built during a time when houses are smaller, but now there's a need for them to grow to accommodate uh, families of this era. And this is just kind of a, a bird's eye view. So I'm gonna go through the architectural. Um, this is the existing uh, first floor plan, which kind of goes basic um, from what you saw um, on the photos. Nothing exciting about the basement plan, just kind of the footprint of the house. And there's only two bedrooms upstairs currently on the second floor. And this is the front elevation, which you're aware from the photos. I'm gonna go through these somewhat quickly because they, you've really already seen it from the photographs in the rear. And this is what's being proposed. So as I've mentioned, we're going to include the garage. We're going to expand the kitchen, uh, the foyer, and the family uh, family room in the back to accommodate a family, and then uh, the deck in the back. Basement is the garage, obviously, and then there's going to be uh, it's going to be a slab for the garage, and then storage below, where the other part of the addition is. And then there's going to be some additions for the bedrooms, baths, et cetera, for the upstairs, second floor. And this gives you an idea of the architectural elevation, how it kind of finishes off the house, if you will. That's the front. This is the right. As you face the house to the right, this is this is the rear with the deck and the in the uh, kitchen and family room in the back, and this is the uh, left side. So you know, as I mentioned, I think when you factor in the uh, you know what as you know with variances, the, the unique circumstances can include land or structures. We have a deficient lot, as I've mentioned, because of lot width. Uh, in frontage of that era, we have a unique structure where it's located on the property. Um, there is, I think, a hardship because um, this is a family that uh, is growing and needs a space. It's been um, um, and uh, also as far as uh, detrimental for the neighborhood, you will. I believe you have received some neighborhood support letters that are in your file um, already. And I believe at least one neighbor is here, um, perhaps the most impacted neighbor to testify uh, in favor of this. Um, so it's, you know, as far as the third prong for the variance goes, the detriment, um, the detrimental aspect um, uh, derogation, I don't think that that is the case here. So with that said, Mr. Chair, we're happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank and you, I'll Brian. stop sharing. Yeah, please, so I can see. Uh, board members, comments, questions? Kasumi? Uh, quick questions on the uh, the new basement plan. 
I think you show two windows on the back side, but I don't see that windows in um on the elevations you have. Um, is that like above ground window? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let um, our architect Molly address that. Molly, can you unmute and identify yourself for the record? Yeah. Hi, I'm Molly Richter. I'm the architect with Hogan Richter Architects. And um, you found the red herring. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, the idea the idea is that they would just be small windows, um, like in basements, typically on a cape like this, just to get some daylight into that storage space. Would so that be... they are intended to be there as shown in plan and missed on the back elevation. Sorry. About okay. that. They'll be above the ground, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yep. Mickey? Sometimes a two-bedroom house is just a two-bedroom house. I'm trying to find out what's unique about a lot that's too small. What's unique about it? Well, you know what you need to have to get a variant. You have to have, you have, to have yeah. One of, the, one of the prongs for, for a variance is unusual circumstances. A uh, lot. Well, no, it can relate to the structures, too. The structures or the yeah. structure that's on the on the lot. That's know. right. That's right. So, so if it's know, too I small, out on this, make it I, well, yeah. I mean, you know, that goes to the hardship. Um, you know that they that they want to you know accommodate their family needs, um, and and the uniqueness on this is is as I mentioned, it's a deficient lot which th they have no control over, and then it's and then the structure aspect of it is how it's kind of cockeyed to one side of the of the house. I mean, I think it's actually a benefit to the neighborhood to put this addition on and balance it. It's just kind of a an odd looking situation when you look at the property. But if, it, if that's the case, then um, in, in what's it, 14 and a half on the left, why couldn't it be the 15 setback on the right? Well, it could be, but I want to accommodate their needs. I mean, that's why we're requesting the variance. I mean, you don't have to grant it. I acknowledge that, but but I, I think when you when you look at all the aspects of this and the and the impacts on the neighbors, um, who I think you're going to find uh, support it, you know, I, I um, that's your decision. But I think it I think you, it can arguably we, we meet the standards to justify it if you're willing to give it. That's your decision. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, again, we continue to see these. They they are fairly common. Um, as families do want to accommodate um, uh, their needs. And, um, you know, the proposal seems reasonable for the most part to me. Um, again, it, we just have to be mindful anytime they want to increase a nonconformity, which they're doing here with the side setback. Um, you know, we have to feel comfortable that yeah, they are meeting the prongs. Um, you know, the finding isn't the issue really in my mind. It's, it's um, you know, uh, meeting the prongs for that variance. And, you know, one of the things we, we typically are, mindful of is the impact on the neighbors. So uh, we'll get to that, I'm sure we can hear from them, but uh, especially the most directive ones, um, if they're uh, concerned in any way about uh, the nature of what's being proposed. Uh, I would also ask, um, who is the architect? Because I noticed the drawings did not have any sort of professional signature or stamp or anything. So yeah, we go back to that. Hold on. I'll bring that up. I mean, I just didn't see it unless I missed it in the copy we got. There's some sort of professional Title page or something. Yeah, it's a title page. Yeah. It's uh, Hogan Richter Architects. There we go. Okay. I missed that in the package. Okay. Thank you. Did you hear me? Okay. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll just speak up real quick. I can support this. Um, to Brian's point, if this was a uh, a legal lot of 100 feet, they would, you know, wouldn't need a uh, variance. So um, as far as, you know, the neighbor's concerns, if if they come on and support it, then no, I'm all for it. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, did get a couple corresponds from the town. I didn't read them in the beginning because it really doesn't say much. Uh, letter from uh, Chief Sullivan dated December 18th, 2023. After reviewing the application, we have no objection. Memo from Eric Sherman, senior civil engineer from DPW. They have no objections. They just, Brian, I don't know if you've seen this, they require the applicant submit a sewer INI fee to compensate the removal four to one ratio from sewer 
system inflow the fee is 450 per additional bedroom this is estimated to be nine hundred dollars for the additional bedroom to the site also received communications from neighbors and um, many of them write like I do so uh, they're gonna have to excuse me if I miss their names once dated December 21st 2023 we own the property numbered 32 Drury Lane, which directly abuts the property and numbered at 28 Brewster. Our property abuts the property on the same side as the proposed addition. We have reviewed the plans and we are writing in full support of the application and relief sought for the addition. And we would respectfully request that you vote to approve the same. We believe that the proposed addition will provide an enhancement to the subject property and will improve the, will improve the appeal of the neighborhood as a whole. We look forward to this improvement and are happy to see developments like this in our community. Sincerely, it looks like um, a couple whose last name is Green. Another letter dated December 21st. We own the property, David Chair, we own the property located at number 24 Brewster Street, which directly abuts the property at number 28, that is before the board. We reviewed the plans and writing in support of the application and relief sought for the addition. We would respectfully request the approve. The same signed Elizabeth uh, Default or so Belmonte. I am having trouble, but they live at 24 Brewster, which is the next house over. Another letter uh, dated December 21st as well from a couple of folks that say they own the property at 55 Court Street, which directly abuts the property. We reviewed the plans and then writing in full support of the application. The relief side of the addition, we respectfully request that you vote to approve the same. Donna Hansley and the other name I cannot for the life of me make out his first name his or her first name begins with an S is my guess but they live at 55 Court Street with that I'm going to open it up to uh, public comment is there anyone here um, and if you've written in you might you can identify yourself you don't have to repeat uh, or go into it deeply we we understand your support for the letter but please use the raise hand function in Zoom. Going once, going, oh, uh, Melanie Green. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So Melanie Green, I am resident at 32 Drury who did submit that letter, all in favor of the plan that the Newmans have put into place. Wanted to identify myself for the team here. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Going once, twice, not seeing anything. Back to the board. So Mr. Chair, through you, I'm going to have to ask Brian to put up that slide again because it is not in the package we got and I didn't write it down. The architectural, sorry. Sure. Or if we can just... Yeah. For some reason, slide three is not there. It goes from the two the two site plan pages to, right to... Oh, I think you got four. a separate site plan. Um, that might have been the case, but I'll bring it up. Yeah, just so I can capture that once again. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. So I got the plot plan, and I know it was modified today, so yeah. I captured that. Yeah. But then the next one, the architectural title slider. Yeah, yeah I think you got to go by. I think you got to go by the cover sheet because the architectural plans themselves are not labeled with the name of the architect firm, but they're incorporated by the cover sheet. All right, so what was the cover sheet? I guess I missed that. Oh, Newman Residence. There we go. Yeah. It's up on the screen now. Hogan. There we go. Hogan. And that and it's dated, submitted this date, site plan updated 10 1 10 24 at the bottom. Yep. Thank you for that. So, Mr. Chair, I will move that this board, um, and we need both prongs on this. So, the finding. Yeah, so we I move. Need, the, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say, yeah, we have a variance and the finding, Dave. Right, but on the finding, we need both prongs because of the the nature of the proposed changes. So, I move that we grant um, a finding and determination pursuant to Section 19050A of the bylaw that the proposed reconstruction changes, extensions, and alterations at 28 Brewster Road based on uh, the plans presented to us this evening. Ludwig survey uh, solutions, the plot plan, 
dated uh, December 11th, 2023 and updated January 10th, 2024. And the architectural drawings by Hogan Richter dated 12, um, 12, 23 and updated um, January 10th, 2024. Um, shall increase the existing non-conforming nature of the structure on the lot um, with respect to the side yard setback. But we also find that the proposed uh, changes, extensions and alterations shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conformities to the neighborhood. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing seeing none, regular voting members, Dave. Yes. Joe. Yes. Jim. Yes. Chip. Yes. I vote yes. That is unanimous. Okay. And now through you, Mr. Chair, um, Attorney McGrail, the, the variance again is for the side yard setback, right? Correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So uh, I move that we grant the variance pursuant to 190.66 of the bylaw um, to vary the, the requirements of um, 190.34 and uh, Article 6, dimensional regulations, um, based on the same plans noted in the previous motion. Uh, to um, owing to the circumstances of the topography and um, structure on the lot that a literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve substantial uh, hardship financial or otherwise to the petitioner and that desired relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the chapter and I would move this uh, to grant this variance based on the conditions that the project be developed in accordance with the plans noted above. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing seeing none, same voting members, Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? Yes. Chip? Yes. I vote yes. That too is unanimous. So there you have it, folks. Good luck. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. All right, moving on, we're on to other matters. First one up, 24, case 24, 1947, Salem Street, Margaret C. Wilson, trustee of the Wilson Family Trust, minor Maud. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm here on behalf of the Wilsons. Again, attorney Brian McGrail, who I represented the Wilsons at the, uh, at the uh, uh, initial hearing where they received approval from the board for fining for, for the addition at 47 uh, Salem Street. And with me tonight is Emily Barron and Jeff Tucker. They're uh, they're both our architects, and we're requesting what we would deem to be a minor modification. Uh, and I submitted it to the board. I will bring it up on the screen. Um, I think we've done a nice job, kind of highlighting what these are. It's almost like you have to you have to find them. I think they're so small or, or de minimis, but uh, you can you can make that decision. Um, and I think probably the easiest thing is Jeff. Can you can you hop in when I bring this up on the screen? Yep. Okay. If you could identify yourself, Jeff, for the record. Yes, uh, Jeff Tucker, uh, principal architect for Tucker Architecture. Okay, Jeff. You got, I've got slide one on the front. If you could point out to the board what the change is on this. Uh, yes, uh, this is kind of a little game of where's Waldo. You know, kind of figure out where the uh, what's changed here. Uh, the front one is 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 quite minor. It's actually a pitch change. If you look at the upper. Uh, uh, drawing, you'll actually see what was previously approved. And on the bottom, you're going to see what is uh, being requested of you. Uh, the bottom one, you'll notice that the uh, dormer on the right side on the uppermost roof is slightly shallower than the one above. It's actually a half inch per foot shallower. And then the porch roof, the little skirt that kind of uh, runs around the lowest uh, level here uh, is also a half inch uh, per foot shallower than what was previously approved. Uh, you know, pretty minor. Again, it's it's uh, difficult to even kind of find it on this, but uh, that is one of the changes being requested. Great. And I'm going to go to the next change, which is the final change. Yep. And so there's two changes that you'll notice on here. Again, uh, on the upper one, you'll see what was previously approved. The bottom elevation is what is being requested. Uh, this one might be a little bit more obvious, but again, very minor. Uh, you'll notice the upper shed dormer on the upper left. That is the uh, ex the previously approved one. Uh, down below, you'll notice that it is slightly wider. Uh, when we were doing our construction documents, 
Uh, we felt that we could get, improve the stair by making it uh, that dormer slightly wider to get a little additional headroom. Uh, the previous uh, stair did work. It was conforming and legal. Uh, however, we felt it would be a more comfortable uh, ascent up to the attic if we had a little bit more room there. Uh, the other piece you'll notice is that there's two windows. One was in a powder room and one was in a mud room. Uh, on that upper piece, we would like to eliminate those on the bottom portion. What about that little window there? You have four lights on top and nothing down below. Is that changed? Yeah, that I, I believe that that was a there's a um, a decorative window that they wanted to uh, reuse. So rather than uh, uh, put in a brand new uh, divided light unit, uh, the idea there is to do a clear unit to uh, celebrate that. Uh, I was just making sure it wasn't a uh, typo. No, no, that's uh, that, that's intentional. That is that it, Brian. That's it. Questions, comments, board members. I would agree that these are pretty minor modifications. Agree, it's pretty de minimis, but uh, yeah. we'll give anyone a chance to speak up if they feel differently. Are those two added windows like do they point at anyone's house or anything? Is it going to be a problem? Uh, we actually subtracted windows. Oh, subtract. Oh, mm -hmm. there you go. So even better. They're not going to bother anybody. <laughs> the neighbors are upset they can't look in. <laughs> All right. Pleasure of the board. I don't think we have to open it up to public on a minor mod. No. So, Mr. Chair, I will move that we find um, that the proposed changes uh, presented tonight uh, from Tucker Architecture dated January 5th, 2024, are minor modifications to the board's previously approved special permit for this project. I'll second that. Oh, I'm sorry. Point of order. Was it a special permit, Brian? Or a finding? It, it was a finding, yeah. Okay, so I stand corrected um, to the board's previously approved finding um, on this matter. Second the amendment. Motion. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? Hearing seeing none, Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? Yes. Chip? Yes. I vote yes. Thank you. That's all set. Yep. Thank you. Next up, 200, 400 Corner Power Parkway, CCF Minor Mod. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Here, uh, Attorney Brian McGreal here on behalf of uh, CCF, um, Cabot Cabin and Forbes on 200, 400 Corner Power Parkway for request for a minor modification. Um, I had submitted some architectural plans in this regard which we're gonna table, we're not gonna move forward with that. Um, what those deal with, we will be back on that. And we had a meeting with the board liaison, Mr. McBain on this, that they have, um, they they are in the process of finalizing uh, an agreement with a high-end restaurant. And we're gonna need some, we're gonna need to request some modifications to allow for the appropriate installation of a kitchen. Uh, the way the building is designed, there's just too many windows to the, in the restaurant portion of the building. So we met with Jim in detail on this, um, and you know I think he understands um, um, what we're doing or what we're what we're going to do, um, but we're not going to present that tonight because after we submitted those to you, we had another meeting with the restauranteur who wants some more changes. So we're going to fine tune that. We don't want to do it three times, um, so we'll be back on that. Um, what um, what I do want would like to accomplish tonight is is request a minor modification to one of the conditions uh, relating to the mock-up panel. Um, the um, I'm going to bring up um, I, I kind of redlined it. I thought it would be easiest to do it this way. Um, and we met with Jim on this also. Um, with the significance of this project, um, what Cabot Cabin and Forbes has decided to do, their mock-up panel is going to be a mini building. They're going to build an entire small building with all of the materials on it because they want to test the materials for water um, um, uh, to make sure water doesn't get in. They want to test the flashings. They want to test the windows. So you're going to get more than a mock-up panel. You're going to get a mini building that's going to have all of the materials on it. You'll be able to walk up and see the building, and they're going to test it under different conditions once it gets built. Uh, the issue with that is it's gonna take a while to do that. So one of our conditions was that the mock-up panel had to be completed by the time the particular building foundation is backfilled and before any of the items re are required to be on the mock-up panel are put in the building. 
we would like to, we don't want to delay our foundations. So we just would like to kind of streamline that condition to say that the mock-up panel should be completed by the time the particular items required to be on the mock-up panel are put on the building. It's going to give the board plenty of time. We're not going to put anything on the building until you see the mock-up building. But you redlined out the before any of the items, Brian. Um, let me see. Um, no, you redlined too much. Yeah. Did <laughs> it now shall be completed by the time you stop, the items stop are required. Stop at hand, right? No. Just, so put think R. R. Just put R after particular. Then it'll say the mock-up panel shall be required by... <clears throat> shall be completed by the time the particular items are required to be on the particular on the mock-up panel. Not if you need that, Greg. The mock-up panel shall be completed by the time the particular items required to be on the mock-up panel. Okay, panel. yeah, yeah, you're right. It's perfect. And I think it works. But... Works as is. So, so let me let me note here um, that uh, this is not unusual in very large projects for something like this to happen. If you've been involved in any of the projects in Boston, this is something which would happen as well. So uh, in the suburbs, the same thing with a large project, basically. You get a much better feel for what's going up this way than the partial ones that we see as we go along with some of these smaller projects. So it makes sense to make this modification to allow for them to proceed. I agree, Jim. This goes above and beyond. This gives us something more than we normally get. I just wonder if I think it covers. I was going to say if we just needed some belt and suspenders language, but you no, know, it's, it's 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 the biggest thing is windows and stuff like that, and they've got to be in the panel before. Yeah, you know, if they leak, that's more their issue than ours. Ours is appearance more than anything else. So. As long as the the items, the brick, the siding, yeah. all that's there before it goes up, I think we're fine. Mr. Yeah. Like I said, I think we're getting more than we normally do, which is good on this project. I agree. Can so, it go to my backyard and become a shed? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, so process-wise. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that, should I? So process-wise, if it's a quick answer, if it's not a quick answer, then, oh, well, don't tell me uh, <laughs> so this is just an extra building that then comes down after or becomes i don't know a utility shed or how's that what's the it, process here it comes down okay yeah goes in a dumpster yeah i mean look at the work look at the work the amount of work that's no, going yeah. to just prepare that site oh, it's peanuts yeah honestly I, that's not even what i don't care about the scale i was just wondering what, what like does this change the end state? But clearly it doesn't, so. No, no it doesn't impact site plan or anything, no. no. So um, if if we're finished with wrapping our head around this one, just let me lay back to uh, my previous discussion with the group about the restaurant. And uh, they do need a, 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 a wall where the kitchen is that will be basically as the scheme was proposed shown to me and it was it was strictly an open space it was i didn't see any layout for equipment or anything like that but what they proposed is that the wall towards 128 would be solid and that would allow their kitchen basically to butt up against all of that wall and it gave them the flexibility they needed basically in a kitchen kitchen you don't want obviously windows in a kitchen and so this this is the change one other thing to be aware of some discussion about maybe on the outside of that wall there may be some signage related to the to the restaurant that's there and you might consider jordan's across the street when you talk about this <laughs> whether you want to whether you want to you know have a little signage war with them or whether you want to keep the scale down and appropriate to wakefield so we can show reading that um, we have a better sense of reality on our side of the, of the road Okay. With that though, let's let's take care of the, the, the business that's in front of us in terms of the minor mod. Any other comments or questions from the board? We'll need to know uh what and who the restaurant is too. <laughs> before everyone else. We'll let you know. <laughs> That'll be required before the vote. All right, think of motions in order for this unless someone has an objection. 
No, Brian, this is condition 13 in the decision. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, Mr. Chair, I'll move that we um, grant the request from the petitioner uh, and um, to change uh, condition 13 in the board's decision um, to um, eliminate the um, requirement to have the mock-up panel uh, done by the building foundation being backfilled uh, as noted and shown to us this evening. We'll get a copy of this uh, amended condition, but I find that this is a minor modification to our special permit on this project. Seconded. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing seeing none, Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? Yes. Chip? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, Mr. D'Amico wanted me to tell you that he, he will be back um, in keeping you updated on the progress of construction. Right. Um, as you can see, they're moving along quite well. And uh, and I've received a number of people have commented to me how, how meticulous the site is, especially along the lake, that they're doing, a, you know, incredibly uh, good job of being great, great housekeeping. So, and thank I, you. I, and I would uh, vote on that as well, basically having to walk by it almost every other day. Um, Brian, um, will they be presenting anything at the next meeting? I don't know, uh, Jim. They didn't yeah. give me the time frame. Yeah, Brian, you're about to lose your liaison, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask. Yep, I think I got them one more time, right? Yep, that's yep. it. Okay. Then you're a mushroom. <laughs> and when Brian, I assume as part of working this out, we'll we'll see the final plan for that restaurant. You know, like if anything starts to need to be on the outside stacks, any you know vents, that that'll all be hashed out in. Oh in yeah. Hearing. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Not just windows and solid walls, but like yeah, the whole yeah. thing. So, yeah. you know, things don't magically appear after the fact. Like, yeah, you know, keep that in mind, Dave. We've seen that enough, haven't we? We have. So, I just put it out there. Yep. Understood. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, 89 Hopkins Street, uh, eight, uh, zero Tarrant Lane discussion, monument sign and monitor mod. And again, Jesse, if I thought the meeting was going to be long, I would have jumped up front per your request. But actually, I thought be, we'd be done quicker than we were. So we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, for the record, attorney Jesse Schomer representing the applicant and developer of the 89 Hopkins Street 40B project. Uh, my office is located in the Edgewater Office Park in Wakefield. With me tonight, Mr. Chair and members of the board are members of the project team and ownership, John O'Connor and Dave Repucci from the Dolbin Company. Anthony Bonacorso also representing management, our civil engineer Chris Barrages of Williamson's Barrages as well as Elliot Brundage, our landscape architect. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, I'd like to share my screen and, and run through the, the updated plans that we're, we're, we're uh, here to show you tonight. Uh, but primarily this has to do with the project signage. As the board members may recall, uh, condition 21 of the comprehensive permit for this project required the applicant to return to the board uh, to show you the final sign design. I think we uh, we doubled our effort to make sure we got this in before Jim is off the board. So uh, we're happy we're able to get in under the under the wire. Uh, so if I can show my screen here, I'll start maybe with the previous sign design. Can everyone see the my screen here? We can. Okay. So this is an excerpt from the construction documents, which shows the the cut sheet of the the conceptual project plan. Uh, I personally liked the name project name, but the ownership didn't ask for my opinion on that one. So we've we've <laughs> modified the name of the project, as you'll see in, in just a moment. Um, but before we move on from from that slide, you'll notice that this was originally proposed to be six feet wide by four feet tall with a little bit of extra space here. Um, granite posts on the side and, and a square footage of uh, 25 square feet uh, for double sided sign. The new sign that we're proposing is very similar to what was previously proposed. As, as before, there'll be one up light here on the ground. It's uh, now proposed to be one foot shorter in height. It's a total of six feet in, in height from the ground to the top of the, uh, to the sign. It's proposed to be one and a half feet wider than the previous sign. So the resulting square footage of this sign 
is proposed to be 30 square feet as opposed to uh, 25. Though, as I noted uh, just a moment ago, it is going to be uh, lower to the ground than the, the previous sign by a foot. Uh, in our application to the board, we had also presented a proposal to modify the location and the orientation of the sign, um, but we're, we're withdrawing those requests uh, tonight uh, after consultation with the, um, with the uh, landscape architect and civil due to the location of the uh, landscape in, in this area and utilities. Uh, we've decided to stick with the original location and orientation of the project sign, which is shown here, uh, rather than the depiction of it here, which we had we had proposed to uh, sort of turn it to the side and have two lights, one on each side, and have a two-sided sign. We're going to stick with the original location and orientation, which is pointed more towards the, the site driveway with the one up light, and this will now be a single-sided sign, uh, not, not two sides. And I can I can go back to the the new uh, layout of the sign. It's proposed to be a uh, aluminum face. The blue the blue here is aluminum uh, granite posts noted here, and it'll be raised acrylic uh, logo on the uh, the white lettering of the sign. So uh, I believe that's that's the the sum of it, uh, Mr. Chair. I'll uh, take my screen share down and and turn it back to you if you have any questions for me or members of the team. We're happy to go through this in, in any further detail or any other uh, matters you'd like to discuss. Jesse, I thought I saw something about a dog park, a dog walk. Th that was a separate uh, application. We can we can talk about that tonight. Uh, that was a, a previous request for a finding of insubstantial change, uh, which uh, it has now been deemed under the 40B regulations to have been approved, but we're happy to- Oh, okay. I, I, uh... That's fine. I just remember no, seeing. Chip, Chip, you're right that, that yeah. when they came forward, this both Ben and I thought that the board should see it because it did. You know, the amount of discussion we had relative to parking and uh, everything associated with um, with the project when it went through. Jesse, I don't know if it's been approved because I I did know that I did note that I I did write you an email saying. Um, that I didn't, I, I wanted this to come before the bull board in agreement with uh, Ben's ruling as well. But if you're willing to talk about it, I don't want to belabor that process. Maybe we take care of the sign first and then sure. move on. That's that. fine. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. No, Chip, you weren't, I, you weren't wrong, no. <laughs> That's a rarity. <laughs> so any comments, questions on the sign? Jim, do you want to weigh in at all or? Jesse, you want to bring the sign back up again? Sure thing. Here. So what do we get for letter sizes here? I wonder if if Dave Repucci can answer that question. I don't I don't have the scale of the of the lettering available to me here. Uh, yes, just a moment. I will get those drawings pulled up. So there's no planting around except for grass. Is that what I'm assuming here? I believe I have a I have a rendering actually. I, I should have put this up uh, previously, Jim. I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, this is the photograph that was taken in the last few days. Yeah, it's superimposed. But what do we got for planting? Yeah. So Elliot, can you can you run through the plantings that are going to be around around this sign? What these low plantings are here? Yes, uh, Elliot Brennan, landscape architect for the project. Um, currently, you're seeing some evergreen trees that are in wrap. They planted recently, um, got some uh, evergreen shrubs at the bottom. Uh, we're going to be having some uh, perennials uh, planted, particularly daylilies, uh, in front and adding, adding some um, asters as well to highlight the name. <laughs> There'll be some simple planting in front, and as Jesse had mentioned, there's one light um, positioned on on the sign itself, um, and we'll also be there's a strip of of grass as well um, in front of it, so it covers uh, covers the planting. I 
I guess I'd, I mean, six feet up, that's a heck of a height. I want to see it at least down another foot lower than what's proposed here, but I would like to know what the lettering size is, particularly the primary at this point. Looking at my scale, it's looking like they're about one foot one on the uh, the tallest point. But you're not providing us with, you know, that sort of detailed information on what you're what you're showing us. So we need we need a record of this of the whole. So what is what are the scale of each one of the letters basically? So at the summit, one size and Hopkin. I don't care really about the professional management piece because it's so minor, but. Yep, uh, let me just take a quick look to see if I do have that available to me right now. So Jim, let me just state on the, the six feet. I'm okay with the six feet. I don't I also don't think you should be any closer than two feet to the ground because that's an entrance that's going to have snow plowed up in it and everything else. Um, they need to have two feet under. Okay. And size wise, I think I was with Jim. I drive by there every day and yeah. around that turn. You, yeah. Six foot sign. You're only, you don't see it until you're within 75. Well, I know, yeah, I mean, I know oh. the scale, the scale of the project is such, is so overwhelming compared to the sign. You're, you're correct in that. But I mean, even, even the, even the lettering at a foot. I guess more what I'm talking about is, yeah, the scale of the project, I guess, if you're just looking at that, makes you want, feel like you want a large sign. But there isn't a large field of view. You're only, the furthest away you're going to see this is when you come over the bridge, essentially from, um, you know, the way it's angled from, um, you know, the Wakefield side of 128, and that's only, what, 75 feet, 100 feet maybe? You don't yeah. need a six-foot yeah. sign. And the way it's angled, you're also not seeing it coming down. Uh, see it coming down East Street. But even at that, you see the project anyway, so do we really need a six-foot <laughs> Yes, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It doesn't even, in my mind, this doesn't even need, need a sign. I mean, but. All right. Well. No one else. I, I don't have, you know, I'm not that averse to it. I just, I, I understand where Chip's coming from. And, oh, and right, if we can be smaller but still have the two feet, that'd be fantastic. I, um, or even, I mean, I, I, other projects, I don't think since I've been on, I think six years been on this board, we haven't seen a sign this big ever. A grounds, a monument sign for a project much less one that you, you never more than 75 feet from it. Yeah. So just, just to reiterate, as I noted before, um, the sign that we're proposing, this actually is smaller in height than what the board has already approved. The, this sign is seven feet. The, yeah. This has already been approved by the board. So we, we propose to reduce it by a foot to in, in consideration of those, those kind of, obviously you, you see the project well in advance of, of approaching it from, uh, whatever direction you're coming from. So uh, we agree uh, essentially that, that the larger sign was not necessary. So we, we propose to go down to the six. six Didn't you have... say you're increasing the square footage? It's going, the square footage of the, the sign panel, it's, it's, yeah. it's being widened. So we're proposing to widen the sign uh, by a foot and a half. But the square, the sign is bigger. The square the, footage isn't wider. just a length, isn't just a width. It's an area. The square footage of the sign is bigger. It's it's wider by a foot and a half. That's that's what we're, we're proposing. All right. So width and square footage are completely different. If you're making it smaller in height, I guess the square footage of the sign is bigger, right? The area of the sign is bigger. Of this, if you can see my cursor here, Greg. Yes. That's the sign panel here. If we if approximately 18 inches here, this is the increase width of it. But if you look at, this is the, the height off the ground to the sign, 24 inches. This is the height of the sign. So six feet from top of sign to the ground level. So previously the sign that the board had approved would be somewhere up here. 
So we're talking about a sign that's up all the way up here. Rick, I think they can they can actually have. I mean, forget the fact that for the moment, if this was a new sign standing on its own, they can have somewhere around fifty square feet. But it it gets divided up amongst other signs, and this is the only sign, as I understand. Yep, that's right. I understand. If other people, so don't I, to I care, guess I I don't have any issue with it. I I'd like to see it lower, but uh, I would agree with uh, where Chip's coming from, particularly at its location. Yeah, I, if other people don't have a problem, I just think it doesn't. This area doesn't call for it, but if other people don't have a problem, I'm not going to belabor it. Well, I I I was thinking that originally when I you know because of the residents there, but you look at this is not the only project on the street, and all of them have fairly large signs. So, you know, not driving by there every day, I don't think any of them belong. But again, I'm not going to belabor the point. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I drive by there every morning. And it, I don't think any of them need signs. You can tell where you're going. I mean, <laughs> Better on the ground than on the building. All right, anybody else? Nope, I'm just happy not to see any phone numbers on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was intentional, Dave. What's right. that? I think that was intentional. No phone yeah. numbers. We understand. Yeah, correct. Good choice. But they've shown up before too unexpectedly. So glad to see it. It's been but, adhered to. I'm okay. fine. Without any discussion, pleasure of the board then. So Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve the sign uh, as proposed this evening from Expo Sign and Graphics dated December 7, 2023, as part of the special permit, uh, comprehensive permit application that the board had previously approved. Second. Motion's been made, second. Any further discussion? Hearing, seeing none. Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? Yes. Chip? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Everyone. Thank you very much. Um, I can I can go right to the, the plan, uh, Tom, of the uh, the dog park, if you like. Please do. Sure. So just to extend here. So this is a plan that was previously filed. This was filed with Ben DeCristoforo back in October. Uh, after a conversation with him, he made the determination that what this change is proposing, and I'll, I'll describe it in a sec, uh, was not under the language of the comp permit uh, de minimis. Um, so he referred it to the board for review of this proposed change under the insubstantial project change standard of the 40B regulations. So I'll go to the next page here. This is These were attached to our letter that were sent to Ben and to the board. Uh, this is the previous landscape plan and the area that's highlighted over here in the far corner of the site. This was proposed to be a, a dog run. And as you can see, it's, it's really an isolated part of the site. There's not much room here to, uh, to make much use of it. So as the, the project plans were, were proceeding and the project was under construction, uh, the developer took a look at this area here and, and had the thought that this would be a little bit better and more optimal use of the site for this dog park. So uh, going back to the previous plan, what they proposed to do is to turn that area into an, an official dog park area. Uh, it'll be available for residents to, to walk their dog out to, to do their business as it were. And in connection with this change, uh, what they'd like to do is make it accessible to the residents uh, of the project so they can uh, they can walk in here. So this area here, this was a previous parking space. So this will be blocked off and striped almost like a uh, handicapped accessible space to allow residents to walk up to this ramp here, which gives access to the uh, trash uh, com containers, as well as the dog park itself, which is this area here. In order to accommodate this area for the residents to to walk in this this uh, to access the dog park, it was necessary to modify the dimensions of I believe twelve of the parking spaces. And Chris can confirm that I've got that right. But essentially, what what we had to do was to reduce the width of these twelve parking spaces by six inches. Uh, there's no change in the overall number of parking spaces in the project. It'll be uh, 269 as as previously proposed. 
the total number of compact spaces in the project, I believe, and, and Chris can again confirm that I've got this right, is one more compact space than the board had previously approved in the comp permit. So we're essentially increasing only by one compact space because as the board members may recall, uh, when the project plans were advanced to construction documents, it was possible to expand the size of a number of the parking spaces in the parking garage uh, to reduce the number of compact spaces. So uh, this change would kind of uh, cancel out that, that benefit, uh, but we think that it's on balance a, a benefit to the, the residents of the project who will be able to access this this area as an amenity for the for the site? Uh, so that's the that was the previous proposal. As I mentioned, uh, it was filed back in October. So the twenty day period uh, for review of this has has expired by by some time. Um, but again, we're happy to present this to the board to uh, to um, hear what you have to say about it. And um, if you'd like to take a vote on it, uh, you certainly can, but you're not required to at this point. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? It just, Dave, uh, Tom, I'm trying to figure it out. You and Ben thought it needed to be presented to us. Jesse obviously thinks it doesn't. Um, if we don't vote on it and move forward, at what point do you, uh, what's the process to fight your decision to bring it forward to us? I'd have to uh, consult with Mr. Mullen, but um, if no one has a problem with it, it it's moot, right? Um, to me, it just, it, Jesse, can you answer the process? Sure, sure, I, I definitely can. So the way that the 40B regulation works in this instance is that the uh, the notice and request for a insubstantial change is filed with the board, which happened back in October. And the board has 20 days to determine if it's an insubstantial or a substantial change. Uh, if the board does nothing, or if you vote to find it to be an insubstantial change, the permit is automatically deemed to be amended to incorporate the change. You don't have to do anything. Um, it, it just it becomes incorporated into the permit without it, without need for any action by the board. If you determine that it is a substantial change, then that requires a full public hearing for the board to take a look and review. You'd have to issue notice to abutters uh, and and republish in the paper. But the the kinds of project changes that the 40B regulations contemplate as being substantial changes are things like increasing unit count by more than 10 percent uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is substantial so in your mind this has already been approved because we didn't see it within 20 days that's yes that's our that's our position but again if the board would like to take a vote on it uh that it is insubstantial that certainly would would clarify the issue for us as we as we move forward the, the only thing i would add chip is that um i was part of an email chain with with ben uh, Gail and Jesse, and I'm not sure of all that timing. I'd have to go back and investigate myself. But uh, if we don't have a problem with it, then right, that's the point. Move, that's right? the point of okay. trying. So if, if if folks have a problem, speak now, forever hold their peace. I think this is a perfect spot for a dog park. <laughs> I guess my only problem is procedurally, Jesse. I mean. I, it seems to me there was some back and forth. Simply pointing that out to the chair would have been helpful. You know, we are all volunteers. I don't think the, I know the chair isn't a land use attorney. If this was substantial and it was going to be uh, contentious, it would have been nice to simply have the courtesy to point that out rather than come to this meeting and say, you can take a vote but it's essentially mood anyways, after presenting it. Uh, sure. I, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll take that in, into consideration. I'll, I'll certainly do that. On the next one, though, though, I'll say hopefully this is the last of the insubstantial changes for this project. I think we're, as, you, as, as you've seen, I'm sure, Greg, uh, as you, you've driven by, um, they're well along in construction and they're actually going to be applying for uh, COs later this month. So uh, this is hopefully the last time we'll be before you on this one. Yeah, no, I agree. It, lo it looks good, but yeah, I just don't appreciate the here it is, but it's approved. <laughs> Understood. Fair point. 
Mr. Chair, how does this get incorporated into this is just, you know, you have the building permit, you have, excuse me, the um, the building permit. When you get a occupancy permit, this isn't going to affect that what, whatsoever as far as getting that? No. No, this, this wouldn't affect the, the occupancy. No. No. This would just be incorporated into the plan so Ben has, you know, as built and, you know, has everything uh, appropriate in the files. Right. Yeah, and just just to point out, also we did review this this change with with Ben. He didn't have any issue with it. He just didn't feel comfortable making the call on his own. He wanted it. He wanted it to go to you. What well, what was there originally? Just curious. Was it just landscaping, a grass bump out, and some landscaping? It's just it's a it's a sort of a circular area. It wasn't really programmed with anything. So that's I think that's. That's what dawned on us as well that it wasn't really being used for anything, so might as well make a good use of it. And it's already fenced in, though, right? Or... That I'll have to defer to uh, to John and to uh, Dave to to confirm. I'm not certain about that. It's not fully fenced in right now. There is a perimeter fence that uh, but that but it is not fully fenced in now. You'll be adding a fence for the dogs. Come again? I'm sorry. You'll be adding a fence. With yeah. Yeah. I yeah. That's I believe shown here. This yeah. uh, with the X's. This the one. Double, the double fence and mount here. Yep. What's, what's the date of this plan? Can you show the timestamp on this one? On this plan, this is. I'm gonna have to crane my neck here. This is stamped by Chris on ten twenty three of the of last year. I'm Chris Barajas. Yes, that's right. If you uh, if you pan over Jesse, there's a revision block right right next to there, and there should be a, something in the revision block um, right below the title. There you go. So yep, same date as my signature in this case, ten twenty three twenty three. Okay, thank you, Dave. Are you trying to make a motion? Because I mean, it literally, there's nothing we can do, so it doesn't even matter. Like it, that, um, as you can tell, it's sort of upsetting that, he, but it doesn't. There is nothing to clarify. No. You know, just, that if we want to take a vote to clarify something, but it doesn't clarify anything. No, I, I just to, to, to the chair's thought was that at least we've all seen it now, and if we wanted a vote, <laughs> then it's on record that we did. You know, even no, though I, I, I just you no, know, so. I, I think Jesse heard the point that if, if if in the future if they go in and talk to Ben and Ben wants to send it to the board to not do anything and wait for the twenty days to go up and then declare it. Yes, fair fair point. And and yeah, point because Ben's yeah, you know, when Ben says he's good, that's his desire. And then, you know, I that that part's a, a tad annoying. Um, I'm sure. Uh, but we made that point. So I you know, it's getting late too. So <clears throat> no one really has a problem with it. So it is what it is. Um I learned a lesson from it, school of hard knocks type of thing. Um all right, fair enough. I'm not inclined to deliver that. I, I think it's on record that we've all seen it and we've voiced our our thoughts on it. So I'm I'm fine with it too. So let's move on. Yep. Okay. Just to confirm, are you are you inclined to take a vote to confirm? No. Okay. Okay. That's fine. You're you're not required to, as I said, but um <laughs> certainly um certainly even even if, even within the 20 days you're not required to i'll say that okay uh, we we hear you and and for the next go around uh, i'll be be sure to to specify that more clearly my yep. apologies yep it's ben you got to worry about not me <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not all right all right moving on thank you appreciate thank the you. presentation your time sorry you had to wait tonight no, no apologies necessary. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. All right. Next up, Clark board comments. Um, Joe? The, the only thing I have is from uh, the bylaw review committee. So the, the first rough draft is out. Uh, I can send it to you guys. There is one added thing into it. Um, section 6-4. He added it. Um, Performance standards for multifamily or non-residential uses. Uh, he basically took it out of the, Med the, the Medford zoning law, the bylaw, copied and pasted for us. So uh, I think we might have a subcommittee meeting on it just to 
to go through it, but it goes, you know, it goes through uh, lighting standards, noise standards. It's a whole booklet. I can send it to you as a separate insert if you guys want to take a look at it. Um, yes, please. Yeah, um, if, and if you could give, if they're going to be a subcommittee hearing on it, yeah, maybe a couple of us could attend. I, I, you know, can people attend those and comment? Yeah, we were trying to set it up, but Bobowski is he's on vacation for a couple of weeks, and then the next couple of Mondays is a holiday, so um, I think it might be in February. We're gonna do we'll send over a reminder, but um, I'll send like I said, I'll send you a quick email in the next couple of days of the uh, rough draft, and I'll highlight this section because it's a pretty big section that's been added. All right, maybe, you know, I'm just thinking out loud, maybe we should come up with a, a practice for how we're going to deal with this going forward. Do we want to distribute the information to board members and have, you know, as chair, I guess I could collect comments so that we could put them together and, and share them with the subcommittee uh, appropriately? What are folks thinking? Sounds good to me. Let you go to a meeting and present yeah. our thoughts. <laughs> you got nothing yeah. else to do. Yeah, because if more than two of you go, then it has to be posted. Okay. Right. I think it should just be one person coming okay. back. And it could be Joe bringing our comments back. Right. right. That's why I was saying if we, yeah. we can do a combination of things. Um, but that's why I was thinking if we just put all our comments into one comment uh, page or whatever, two pages, whatever it comes out to be, uh, that might be the most simplest way. Then we avoid any you know, public well, meeting law violations. No, and if there's something we don't like in it, we can go speak at town meeting as a group, you know, just one after another after another if need be. Yep. Well, okay. I think it's, like I said, I think it's going to be set up with like like Theo from Planning Board. Um, to see, he's got, there's a big section for him also in this. Um, well, like I said, we don't have another, we didn't have a meeting since the middle of December and January is out. So I think our next meeting is February. Um, and I I know this was going to pop up, but like I said, it's just the first rough draft. And they think, we think it might go like five, six, seven drafts before we even get anywhere. For this. Yeah, you're not coming to us in April, are you, at the April Town meeting? No, it's a, it, that's going to be a whole year away. But... Yeah, Theo reached out. Uh, we were going to try to get together, but then the holidays hit. So I'll I'll reach back out to him too and see where his head's at on all this. All right. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Anything else? So Jim, we got you for one more. Yeah. Yeah. Afraid so. Yeah. <laughs> I have a quick update. The MBTA subcommittees. The subcommittee, we have sort of finished up and referred our recommendation, which is the same as the recommendation that you guys saw, referred that back to the planning board, or I believe for some reason it has to go through town council to go back to the planning board, to go back to town council, to go to the, the uh, April town meeting. Um, so there have been some, some pushback you guys probably saw in the paper, but also some support too um, for the size of the district. They'll be having, they as in the planning board will be having public meetings if you want to attend or listen to any of those or even the recordings. Uh, and then we'll be coming uh, in front of town meeting in April. Okay. This April then, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that gives us sort of two opportunities um, just in case it doesn't pass because we have to have a compliant district by the end of 2024 um, and if we don't we won't be eligible for a whole host of grants and the state AG's office has threatened legal action on towns that do not uh, comply. So, Greg, if it doesn't pass, will you, will you change change the location? Well, let's figure it out. Well, go to a different spot. Or another, another committee will have to. Yeah. Sounds like the state's got the proverbial gun to our head as a town on this one. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 
And essentially we tried to do what after many hours seems to work for downtown rather than getting into a, well, yes, the law is terribly written as I think we all can agree, but trying to make it work for Wakefield rather than just saying, we don't like the law. So we're going to do the strict minimum and, you know, have most of the newer district away from downtown walkable areas. So, um, because it's centered on the train, not necessarily centered on downtown and our train being offset from downtown sort of affected that. So um, that's sort of where a lot of the contention uh, fell. Yep. An interesting town meeting on both of these. Yeah. Trying to get new zoning bylaws passed in it's this overlay thing. Can't wait. Well, the zoning bylaws a year from now. No, I'm just saying when they do come up. Oh, yeah. No, thank God they're not the in same the one. Oh, in the West. That would be a long one. <laughs> in the East. And Jim, you won't even be here. No, <laughs> great. Dang it. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll be in the stands. You'll, you'll see he'll him. He'll be playing shuffleboard up at Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, 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 if I want to feel your pain, I can always dial in, I suppose. <laughs> Jim, just remember. Block B24. When they say B24, I say, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Anything else? I might not remember B24. Uh, meeting minutes. Yeah, you might want to do it. I wasn't here for one, so I really shouldn't make a motion to approve something that I wasn't here for. Yeah, we got two, Joe. We got the um, yep. executive session, too. Do you want to make a motion on that? What do we have to, what do we do for the executive session? Just because you don't publicize that, right? No, you don't. So well, you don't have to vote to accept that. No, well, we should, even though it's not posted. Just a, they yeah. just don't publish. Yeah. Yeah. We should do it. Okay. But sorry, I put everything away here. But again, not me. Feel free, Chip or Joe or somebody. Yeah, I'll jump. I'll jump on. I kind of remember it's, how to do it. So, Chip, it's the... Uh, Let's start with the meeting minutes. Uh, December 13th and the executive session minutes of December 27th. Yeah, 27th, right. Okay, so I move that we approve the meeting minutes of December 13th as written. We can do voice vote on this. All in favor? Yep. Aye. 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 I move that we approve the minutes of the executive session of December 27th. Aye. 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 Okay, that's that. Gail, uh, when you talk to Ben tomorrow, we'll have to remember that about Jesse because that was very odd. That, very backhanded. She very. did not respond to my email ever. Exactly. And I know that I was CC'd on Ben's email. So that, that for me was not cool. He just I, had to call and tell me to put him on an agenda. You know, yeah, that's what we were asking them to do. Just mm -hmm. so you guys know, it was just a little bit of mm -hmm. non-response because Ben was very clear. Yeah, and, and we and were if, all confused. And mm. if he led tonight with, we will waive that, but he he said the complete opposite. It's already approved, so we yeah. Like, they, right. They're allowed oh, no. to he waive was, that. He was very clear about you don't have to take a vote. Yeah, and they they can waive that. It's not necessarily straight deemed approved, and he was clear that he didn't wasn't going to do it. So, well, that's and something that admittedly is simple. So he should have allowed us, right? Yeah, that I'll, that one. Uh, that's my Irish Alzheimer's. will store that one in the back. Oh yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, Gail, uh, what's yeah. the story with North Avenue, the, the other one that Jesse's involved in? They knocked all the trees down. Um, Taking trees down right now. I, I have some information on that. Um, they got to do pilings on that. So um, they're still waiting for a foundation plan. And Peter Sandown is kind of dragging his feet on a, on that. But with but they gone through ComCom, and there were some changes basically made. Shouldn't they be coming back to this board? I don't think there's any changes for ComCom, was there? <laughs> I don't no, think there was. I, I I understood, anyways, that you know that there were um, along the edge, basically the wetlands, basically were some 
Now, Jim, I thought this issue came up because we made the point we want to see it after ConCon. Well, yeah. And they made the point that it doesn't work that way in 40 beats. <laughs> Another one of those catch 22s. No, they I think their point was they had to go to ConCon after us. They're they yeah. didn't make the point that we can't see changes. Okay. Right. And I, think, but I think thing. it was that if the building doesn't move yeah. and the site plan doesn't change. That's what I thought. Then yeah. there's nothing they need to come back to us for. Well, even if there's small changes, like why would the other 40B come back to us for moving of a dog park? Or at least come to come to Ben. If there's small changes, they need to be seen by somebody. But I don't think they need to come to you for the filings, do they? The foundation hasn't changed. They just they have to do something below the foundation. They don't, don't we don't there. care about the foundations. Yeah. I or I would be interested to see what the hell came out of Comcom. Well, apparently that I don't know if you knew this, Jim, but apparently there was a house there at one point. That's all yeah. Phil. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh. when they, they set their, um, when the tests came back, the soil test samples came back, it was all Phil. So apparently- it came 60s, back brick and mortar? <laughs> <laughs> apparently in the 60s, there was a house there that was knocked down back then. Along with uh, the old high school, huh? <laughs> so, how do you think that? Okay. Okay. Anyway. Anything else? Look at the time. And the motion to adjourn is always in order. So moved, Mr. Hey, Jim, we, yeah, we don't have to say goodbye to Jim yet. So no. We right. won't till we roast him in a local establishment. <laughs> It'll be a local right. roasting. Will that be an open pit or a closed? <laughs> hey Greg, you'll get yours for your email today. We won't say anything in the public record, but I hate you right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's nicer you. than what I said to Jim. So yeah. take it. Take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All just right. Change, just change the direction. That's all. And I always said I would retire when Jim does, but I'm not upholding that statement anymore. <laughs> all right. I think we're ready to adjourn. All in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, all right. Good night, everyone. Good night.